Paul the Moore's battery uh died on me for a split second. Glad we yeah, we're fine. All rise, face the east. Those who do not wish to pray with us, you can stand in silent benediction. Heels together, forming a 90 degree angle. Five fingers on your left hand and two fingers on your right hand. Allah, the father of the universe. Allah, the father of the universe. The father of love. The father of love. Truth. Truth. Peace. Peace. Freedom. Freedom. And justice. And justice. Allah is my protector. Allah is my protector. My guide. My guide. And my salvation. And my salvation. By night. By night. And by day. And by day. Through his holy prophet. Through his holy prophet. Through Ali. Through Ali. Amen. Amen. First, I rise and give praises to Allah, Father of the universe. I give honors to Prophet Noble Drew Ali, the forerunner, Brother Marcus Messiah Garvey. I give honors to all the divine prophets of Allah. I give honors to all the forerunners who paved the way for the prophets to send the message to those different nations. I give honors to all of the leadership of the Morris County people of America, starting with our past Grand Sheiks and moderators, Brother C. Kirkman Bay, Brother F. Nelson Bay, and Brother J. Blakely Bay. And to our past Grand Chief, Brother R. Love Eel, and to our present Grand Chief, Brother R. Jones Bay, and his assistant, Brother A. Hopkins Bay. I give honors to all national, state, and local officials. I give honors to the Grand Governor here in the state of New York, Brother D. Clark Eel, and to his assistant, Brother A. Gaines Eel. I give honors to our Grand Chief here at Temple Number 34, Brother Y. Cyrus Ill, and to his assistant, Brother W. Clendenin Bay. Oh. I give honors to our brother chairman, Brother C. Ferguson Ill. I give honors to all of those who assist with the Moorish Science Temple of America's great movement, also to our secretaries and to our treasurer. At this time, I'm going to turn your attention to the Divine Constitution and Bylaws, Salvation, Starring Crescent, Our God, All Seeing Eye. 
unity, and trust. The Morris Science Temple of America, the Divine Constitution and Bylaws. Act one, the Grand Chief and the Chairman of the Morris Science Temple of America is empowered to make law and enforce laws with the assistance of the Prophet and the Grand Body of the Morris Science Temple of America. The Assistant Grand Chief is to assist the Grand Chief in all affairs if he lives according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. And it is known before the members of the Morris Science Temple of America. Act two, all meetings are to be open and closed promptly according to the circle seven and love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Friday is our holy day of rest because on a Friday, the first man was formed in flesh. Excuse me. And on a Friday, the first man departed out of flesh and ascended onto his father God alone. For that cause, Friday is the holy day for all Muslims all over the world. Act three, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice must be proclaimed and practiced by all members of the Morris Science Temple of America. No member is to put in danger or accuse falsely his brother or sister on any occasion at all that may harm his brother or sister because Allah is love. Act four, all members must preserve these holy and divine laws and all members must obey the laws of the government because by being a Moorish American, you are a part and partial of the government and must live the life accordingly. Act five, this organization of the Morris Science Temple of America is not to cause any confusion or to overthrow the laws and constitution of the said government, but to obey hereby. Act six, with us, all members must proclaim their nationality and we are teaching our people their nationality and their divine creed that they may know that they are a part and partial of this said government and know that they are not Negroes colored folks, black people, or Ethiopians, because these names were given to slaves by slaveholders in 1779 and lasted until 1865 during the time of slavery. But this is a new era of time now, and all men now must proclaim their free national name to be recognized by the government in which they live and the nations of the earth. This is the reason why Allah, the great God of the universe, ordained noble Drew Ali, the prophet, to redeem his people from their sinful ways. The Moorish Americans are the descendants of the ancient Moabites who inhabited the northwestern and southwestern shores of Africa. Act seven, all members must promptly attend their meetings and become a part and partial of all uplifting acts of the Moorish Science Temple of America. Members must pay their dues and keep in line with all necessities of the Moorish Science Temple of America. Then you are entitled to the name of faithful. Husband, you must support your wife and children. Wife, you must obey your husband and take care of your children and look after the duties of your household. Sons and daughters must obey father and mother and be industrious and become a part of the uplifting of fallen humanity. All Moorish Americans must keep their hearts and minds pure with love and their bodies clean with water. This divine covenant is from your holy prophet, noble Drew Ali, through the guidance of his father, God Allah. Moorish American Prayer. Allah, the father of the universe, the father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Allah is my protector, my guide, and my salvation. By night and by day, through his holy prophet, Drew Ali. Amen. The Morris Science Temple of America. I'm going to now turn your attention to the great meeting of Zong, Quran questions for Moorish Americans. I'm going to turn your attention to page seven, questionnaire and additional laws for the more Americans, excuse me, by the prophet Noble Juali. Act one, grand chiefs and governors and heads of all temples, all businesses. Each said temple must be approved by the prophet Noble Juali. Before acting upon by any members, let it be finance, property, or any line of life that will cause the group, excuse me, that will cause the members to sacrifice finance etc. that will cause the support of any group of members. Any former officer that violates these laws is subject to be removed from his office under heavy restriction, etc. by the prophet or the grand chief. Act two, all members are to attend their adept meetings and their public meetings promptly. If a member is found standing around on their meeting period shall be fined 50 cents on the first case and on the second he will be fined one dollar which will go in your emergency fund. If a member is working, his monthly dues must be paid. And if he has money in the bank, he must subscribe for as much as he is able to the Moorish Uplifting Fund because it takes finance to uplift the nation. Act 
three. It is lawful and divine duty of every good member if he is able in finance to aid me in saving the nation. And if he does not, he is an enemy to the cause of uplifting his own people and justice must catch you. Let it be he or she, according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, as I have the power invested in my hands and I will have to enforce the law in order to save the nation. Act four, all members while making a public speech must not use any assertion against the American flag or speak radical against the church or any member of any organized group because we are to teach love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Act five, yeah. all members must promptly attend their meetings and send their children to Sunday school. And the teacher must confirm himself to the questionnaire and let every member exercise his five senses who is able to do so because out from your Sunday school comes the guidance of the nation. Act six, with us, all members must proclaim their nationality. And we are teaching our people their nationality and their divine creed, that they may know that they are a part and partial of this said government and know that they are not Negroes, colored folks, black people, or Ethiopians, because these names were given to slaves by slaveholders in 1779 and lasted until 1865 during the time of slavery. So this is a new era of time now. And all men now must proclaim their free national name to be recognized by the government in which they live and the nations of the earth. This is the reason why Allah, the great God of the universe, ordained noble Juwali, the prophet, to redeem his people from their sinful ways. The Moorish Americans are the descendants of the ancient Moabites who inhabited the northwestern and southwestern shores of Africa. At seven, all members must promptly attend their meetings and become a part and a partial of all uplifting acts of the Moorish Science Temple. Members must pay their dues and keep in line with all necessities of the Moorish Science Temple. Then you are entitled to the name of faithful. Husband, you must support your wife and children. Wife, you must obey your husband and take care of your children and look after the duties of your household. Sons and daughters must obey father and mother and be industrious and become part of the uplifting of fallen humanity. All Moorish Americans must keep their hearts and minds pure with love and their bodies clean with water. This divine covenant is from your holy prophet, noble Juali, through the guidance of his father, God Allah. Islam. Um, if you haven't had opportunity to silence your phones, just, just do so now. I'm going to take a reading from the Holy Quran of the Morris Science Temple of America, divinely prepared by the noble prophet Drew Ali, by the guiding of his father God Allah, the great God of the universe, to redeem man from his sinful and fallen stage of humanity back to the highest plane of life with his father, God, Allah. Know thyself in Allah, the genealogy of Jesus, life and works of Jesus in India, Europe, and Africa, in the land of Egypt. Noble Drew Ali, the prophet and founder of the Moorish Science Temple of America to redeem the people from their sinful ways. I'm going to use this um, time to read from page three, the divine instruction for the Holy Prophet, know thyself and thy father God, Allah. The genealogy of Jesus with 18 years of the events, life works, and teachings in India, Europe, and Africa. These events occurred before he was 30 years of age. These secret lessons are for all of those who love Jesus and desire to know about his life works and teachings. Dear readers, do not falsely use these lessons. They are for good, peace, and happiness for all those that love Jesus. Dear mothers, teach these lessons to your little ones that they may learn to love instead of hate. Dear fathers, by these lessons, you can set your house in order and your children will learn to love instead of to hate. The lessons of this pamphlet are not for sale, but for the sake of humanity. As I am a prophet and the servant is worthy of his hire, you can receive this pamphlet at expense. Mm -hmm. The reason these lessons have not been known is because the Muslims of India, 
Egypt, and Palestine had these secrets and kept them back from the outside world. And when the time appointed by Allah, they loosened the keys and freed these secrets. And for the first time in ages have these secrets been delivered in the hands of the Muslims of America. All authority and rights of publishing of this pamphlet of 1927 by the prophet Noble Juali, the industrious acts of the Muslims of Northwest and Southwest Africa, these are the Moabites, the Hamathites, Canaanites, who were driven out of the land of Canaan by Joshua and received permission from the pharaohs of Egypt to settle in that portion of Egypt. In later years, they formed themselves kingdoms. These kingdoms are called this day, Morocco, Algiers, Tunis, Tripoli, et cetera. Oh. Islam. Um, I was gonna, and I'm gonna just go, go into reading the chapter. I just wanted to just make sure we don't run before we introduce our Sunday school teacher. Islam, can you let the brother know what, what you just read? Yes, I read from page number three. Um, as I we had a call where Sister S. Nunley Bay kind of expressed that with the, it was a Thursday call, Thursday question and answer. She expressed that the way that it was done beforehand was that we would read the entire cover. We would then open and continue to complete here. And then we would also read page three. And so page three is not a technical chapter and it's not labeled as like chapter one and chapter two. And so it made sense that that would be something that would be included upon like the the opening of any of the um, divine instructions before we read them. Um, at this time, I'm gonna read from chapter number 47 found on page 57, at the bottom of page 57. The divine instructions from the Holy Prophet, chapter 47. Egypt, capital empire, of the dominion of Africa. The inhabitants of Africa are the descendants of the ancient Canaanites from the land of Canaan. Old man Cush and his family are the first inhabitants of Africa who came from the land of Canaan. His father Ham and his family were second. Then came the word Ethiopia which means the demarcation line of the dominion of a Mexican, the first true and divine name of Africa, the dividing of the land between the father and the son, the dominion of Kush, Northeast and Southeast Africa and Northwest and Southwest was his father's dominion of Africa. In later years, Many of their brethren from Asia and the Holy Lands joined them. The Moabites from the land of Moab, who received permission from the pharaohs of Egypt to settle and inhabit Northwest Africa, they were the founders and are the true possessors of the present Moroccan empire. With their Canaanite, Hittite, and Amorite brethren who sojourned from the land of Canaan seeking new homes. Their dominion and inhabitation extended from Northeast and Southwest Africa across the great Atlantis, even unto the present North, South and Central America, and also Mexico and the Atlantis Islands before the great earthquake, which caused the great Atlantic Ocean. The River Nile was dredged and made by the ancient pharaohs of Egypt in order to trade with the surrounding kingdoms. Also, the Niger River was dredged by the great pharaoh of Egypt in those ancient days for trade. And it extends eastward from the river Nile, westward across the great Atlantic. It was used for trade and transportation. According to all true and divine records of the human race, there is no Negro, Black, 
or colored race attached to the human family because all the inhabitants of Africa were and are of the human race, descendants of the ancient Canaanite nation from the Holy Land of Canaan. What your ancient forefathers were, you are today without doubt or contradiction. There is no one who is able to change man from the decent nature of his forefathers unless his power extends beyond the great universal creator Allah himself. These holy and divine laws are from the prophet, Noble Drew Ali, the founder of the Uniting of the Morris Science Temple of America. These laws are to be strictly preserved by the members of all the temples of the Morris Science Temple of America, that they will learn to open their meeting and guide it according to the principles of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Every subordinate temple of the Grand Major Temple is to form under the covenant of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, and create their own laws and customs in conjunction with the laws of the Holy Prophet and the Grand Temple. I, the Prophet, Noble Drew Ali was sent by the great God Allah to warn all Asiatics of America to repent from their sinful ways before the great, that great and lawful day, which is sure to come. The time has come when every nation must worship under its own vine and fig tree, and every tongue must confess his own. Through sin and disobedience, every nation has suffered slavery due to the fact that they honored not the creed and principles of their forefathers. That is why the nationality of the Moors was taken away from them in 1774 and the word Negro, black and colored was given to the Asiatics of America who were of Moorish descent because they honored not the principles of their mother and father and straight after the gods of Europe of whom they knew nothing. As I've read the entire chapter of chapter number 47, Egypt, the capital empire of the dominion of Africa, I would like to thank you all for attending, of course, for having your literature in hand. If you find that you have papers and want to take notes, please do so as we turn our Sunday school over to our Sunday school teacher, Brother Y. Cyrus Ill, also our grand sheep. After a song. Oh, if you see me working. I'm building me a home. If you see me working, I'm building me a home. This earthly house will soon decay. And this soul of mine will find me a place if it's to be serving. I'm building me a home. If you see me serving, I'm building me a home. This earthly house will soon decay. And this soul of mine will find me a place to stay. Islam Moors, first I rise and give praise to Allah. And uh, that song, I always thought that song was written by Brother C. Ferguson L. That gives honors and and give honor to the prophet and give honor to Brother T. Ferguson now. Uh, praise Allah. I give uh, praise to the great God Allah. I give high honors to the illust our illustrious prophet, Prophet Noble Juwali, uh, referred to by Brother D. Clark Hill, the grand governor of the state of New York, in his article uh, out of the Moorish Guide, circa 2017, uh, entitled The Vestry Dipped in Gold. He said the prophet was referred to as the sovereign royal prince. Mm -hmm. And on my ride back, uh, I was in Philadelphia yesterday. I ended up riding with the uh, Grand Governor of Pennsylvania. He was telling me, uh, we were talking about, Brother Latimer Bay is very knowledgeable in Islam. He, we were talking about how his family came in and the rarity of an entire family to come in and take their cards out and how that happens and how man must have the light before he can receive the light based off of my analysis. Usually people come into, they end up in a more science temple because somebody was studying in your family before you. And as I asked, I found out that he was a Muslim. His grandfather was a Muslim, and his, but he was Christian. He was born and raised Christian. 
And in the process of, he, he said he was a member of the, I think a na the nation for a long time. He was one of the FOI. Start talking about the Ahmadiyya movement. And he seemed to be very well abreast of, uh, 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 informed on the Ahmadis, Ahmadiyas. And he said the Ahmadiyas refer in their Indian Muslims and they were around contemporary with the time of the prophet. They refer to the prophet Noble Ju Ali as the, as Prince Ali. Praise Allah. They know about the movement. They have our books and they honor the prophet. Call him Prince Ali. We give honors to the prophet Noble Ju Ali. I give honors to um, all of the divine prophets. I give honors to all of our leaders past and present. I give a special honor, I give honors to Brother R. Jones Bay, the Grand Sheikh and moderator of the Moore Science Temple of America. I give honors to everyone and everything that Sister Silzil, our assistant chairman, just gave honors to at the opening of the meeting. I continue honors to the charter and to the flags, uh, the American flag that represents the government which we stand, and the Moorish flag represents the nation. You know, our decent flag with the five highest principles known to man, symbolizing the uh, five pointed green star and those principles being love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. And that flag is over 10,000 years old. You know, some say it's over 50,000 years old. The mother of all flags. I give honors to all of the prophets' literature. I'd like to give a special honor this uh, afternoon to Brother W. Clinton and Bay, our assistant grand sheik, former uh, grand sheik of Temple Number 30, Brooklyn Temple Number 34, um, as he is. Um, honoring and going through the process, I would say celebrating the life of his oldest brother, uh, Ag 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 Agagi. I think it's Agagi. Or... He didn't tell us on Friday. Let me see if he, I thought I saw him. He may be on. He's not on yet. I think it's Agagi from Denim Bay. Or Agi is what you say. Agi. A G A G E. He's uh, celebrating the life of his brother who transitioned this past Thursday, I believe. Uh, uh, honors to Brother Kunen Bay. Uh, also, more for those that were on the call on Friday, we had a little uh, technical mishap. Um, the call, the meeting started funny. We were on one Zoom, and then everyone else was on a diff diff different Zoom. So we switched out. I was I, I didn't realize I was hosting from my cell phone. And when I went to cut my cell phone on like off, like I do usually during meetings to just uh, can save battery power and continue with the computer, I dropped the entire meeting during uh, secretary time. So I apologize for that. For anyone that was wondering what happened. Um, we actually did load it back up. If that ever happens again, go back to the messenger page um, and then try to reboot. We will sign back on uh, shortly, especially if there's a lot of time left in the meeting. So more, let's, let's go into the question area as we, um, I'm actually racing the clock a little bit. We got a 15 minute late start of psychology. Um, so it's already quarter two. We're gonna go right into the question area. I'm gonna read the question and you can repeat the answer. Um, I got some questions for the youth, so y'all stay ready. Um, I'm gonna call you up. Uh, as soon as I start, they give, give me about five, 10 minutes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure that you're engaged. So Pay attention to what I'm we're going over now because it may be the question that I ask you when you come up. Question number one, Morris, who made you? Allah. Who is Allah? Can we see him? Where is the nearest place we can meet him? In the heart. Who is Noble Ju Ali? Is Allah's prophet. What is a prophet? It is the Lord of Allah manifested in the flesh. What is the duty of a prophet? Save nations from the wrath of Allah. Who is the founder of the Moore Science Temple of America? Noble What year was the Moore Science Temple of America founded? 1913 AD. Where? New Jersey. Where was Noble Juwali born? In the state of North Carolina, 1886. What is his nationality? Moorish American. What is your nationality? Moorish American. Why are we Moorish Americans? Because we are descendants of Moroccans and born in America. For what purpose was the Moorish Science Temple of America founded? For the uplifting of fallen humanity. Praise Allah. Any questions on page one? Uh, for those, uh, for our brother that, uh, I'm not sure, Brother Ronald, is this your first time in a meeting yes. at the Moorish Science Temple? Uh, I'm, I'm going to ask this early. Usually we ask this question toward the end. How, how did you hear about the 
uh, more science temple? Uh, I heard through a friend that I haven't, but we grew up on La Fayette, you know, actually years ago, and um, I'm touching you know, separated. He told me about Praise yeah, Allah. Praise Allah. Here. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> I'm going to go over real quickly some of the uh, traditions that we do in the temple. I'm going to warm you up, Brother Ronald, so when you visit any other temple uh, or as you visit here, you kind of begin to gel with uh, the, the format. We're in our Sunday school, so it's uh, open to question and answer. If you have a question, you can just say it's long or put your hand up, and uh, the Moors will recognize you. We can exchange questions about what we're reading over. Uh, on Fridays, you can't do that. The Friday Holy Day, which happens in the evening on every Friday, it's, uh, you, if you raise your hand while someone is speaking and you can't really interact and the, the Moors may think it's odd because they may, you didn't realize that. Islam to the family. Uh, I see Autumn and Trinity. Uh, I don't see Xerxes. I thought, okay, praise Allah. Ramel and, uh, and uh, Amari. Amari got a face on. You all right, Amari? He's all right. Um, and I wanted to say I saw, I saw one of the Moors clap their hands uh, during the meeting. Praise Allah, that's a powerful thought. And then, in, but inside of the temple, technically you wanna, the sisters used to say, uh, we don't clap. They say, what, it stirs up the ethers. Um, anyone know what the ether is? Uh, I, will, I would ask Scarlett, but I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to Trinity. Trinity, what is ether? What, or, or the ethers? If you want to answer it, you can. If you don't, you can just shake your head and I'll go to Brother Petersil will help us. Brother Petersil, I think, is a master of the ether. Well, I didn't say a master, but a specialist of ether. I'm gonna go to Brother Brother Petersil. I'm gonna come right back to you, Trent. So be ready again. Um, we're gonna we're gonna break the ice up a little Brother Brother Petersil, what is ether? <laughs> Islam, we can't hear you. Mm -hmm. I just cut the air off so you can. Islam, Islam, Islam. Um, so my and ethers will be uh, seven eyes of Allah, right? Another another um, term for ethers like are the seven eyes of Allah. Right? That's Elohim. And that you came from question number that's like ninety two or three. Uh, what what other name do we give to Allah? Uh, what what do we call the seven eyes of Allah? What is another name we give to Elohim? Seven eyes of Allah. That's question number uh, ninety eight. You, you, it's, it will hit you. I'm, you're probably mm -hmm. you like me. You're probably running low on on sleep. I bet. Watch. Uh, so we're gonna go to Sister Harmony. I'm gonna use it. When you're in the temple and you have your crystals. So we had a nice conversation right out of the beginning. Let's, 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 let's separate the two, right? Let's first go to Sister Harmony. Uh, I heard I heard uh, the Assistant Secretary on. Sister Harmony, what would you describe as the ether before we begin to break it down and pin it to the verses in the Quran? Islam, first I rise and give praise to Allah. I give high honors to our prophet, Prophet Noble Drew Ali, and I give honors to everything pertaining to Islam. Peace. Peace. Uh, so to me, the ethers represent um, like all of the space between um, all matter, basically. You know, e everything you can think of that uh, is considered air or space, energy that you, you can't see it but it just represents sort of um, a reflection of what is above us um, and what is at the highest level above us, frequency-wise, energy-wise. Um, I oftentimes think of the stars and I think of the ethers as representing everything from the ground and up through to the stars that you know we simply can't see, but that has a vibration and an energy that um, resonates at the highest you know, possible capacity, so. Peace. Praise Allah. Praise Allah. Um, thank you, Sister Sister Harmony Bay. And why am I talking about this? Because we're talking about clapping the hands in the temple versus what the sisters say. When you want to clap, just take a, a handkerchief or a napkin or whatever you can, even a paper towel or something, wave it uh, because it doesn't stir the ether a certain way. Um, so when if we specialize in harmony in the more science temple of America, harmony kind of is when the 
vibration starts to get really high and everybody's kind of, there's an energy that's going, just like water. When you clap, it, it throws the rhythm off. If you clap in water, when the water starts to get a nice little ripple going, it might throw the ripple off. Now there's uh, multiple vibrations going, they cancel each other. One will cancel the other out. So, so either, and I, I said Brother Peter's there because Brother Peter's there has crystals. And a lot of times you see him testing the room. He'll be in a room like this, you know, and people wonder what is he doing? Or he'll have a bowl turning it to create that, that high pitch, which um, helps the pitch of the ether in the room. Scientists would say ether is, uh, they call it the plank vacuum. I've heard of, um, Nazim Harriman calls it the plank vacuum, which is infinitely smaller than an atom and infinitely powerful. Some people call it scalar. Scientists call it scalar energy or zero point energy, but it's that space between us. It appears to be space, but it's actually not. Um, chapter seven, this is real fast. And I'm gonna keep going. I don't wanna get stuck here. Chapter seven, uh, let me first go to chapter eight, which uh, 11, which gives a mundane, mundane example of how ether works. And then chapter seven tells you something very interesting about ether. Now, chapter one and chapter 11 both deal with the creation and the fall of man. And when we fell, we fell at the etherical rate, began to vibrate slower, right? So if you go to chapter 11, page 19, instruction 32, uh, it has a verse that says, now when the ether reached the rate, of atmosphere, that's the vibrational rate of atmosphere. And all the creatures of these planes must, uh, and all the creatures of these planes must get their food from atmosphere, the conflict came. And then that which is called, this, uh, and then that which the finite man called survival of the best became the law. All right, so in that it talks, you can read that entire chapter or section of those chapters, and you can hear how the vibration rate falls, and that's how we end up here from the plane of soul where we started. Chapter seven also speaks to ether. These are the two examples, there's multiple in the Quran. Um, speaks to ether, but on in that metaphysical, the quantum physics section where Jesus and Lamas are talking, then Jesus gives them a very scientific answer to what is truth and what is man. Uh, I think this is a question of what is man. Let me see, let me make sure. No, this is before what is man. Um, instruction number nine, Jesus said about truth, in which is in his answer to truth, he speaks to ether. He said, the things we see are but reflexes just appearing. Where? In the ether. While the ether, while the ethers vibrate so and so, and when conditions change, they disappear. Mm. Right? When conditions change, they disappear. Sister Silzil. This is on page 12, instruction number nine. I'm going to read it again. I, I'm going to read the, a little bit more context to the answers because that's a short, speaks directly to the point that I'm making. Instruction mm -hmm. sets it up a little bit. Jesus said, all the things that can be seen by human eyes are manifest of art, which means truth, or not, which is false, which means falsehood. The things we see are falsehood. Right? The things we see are manifest of truth, but they're actually false. That's so we're seeing an illusion. Everything that we see around us, that's why things change the way that they do. In quantum physics, they always say, when I look under a microscope, how come we can't find nothing solid? Because it's, it's really sometimes it's a manifest of naught. Uh, and so must pass away. The things we see are but reflexes just appearing. Right, like they say about we learned about the planets and the stars in science class. They say the light coming from the star that we see through the microscope, that light was there millions of years ago, and it's just reaching us, so we're just seeing it. But that star is gone now. Right? The things we see are re reflexes just appearing while the ethers vibrate so and so. And when conditions change, they disappear. The holy breath is truth. I would say that the holy breath and ether is probably related. If ether is kind of a material, the holy breath is the thing that controls it. The holy breath is like the force that creates things. The holy breath is truth. It uh, is that which was and is and evermore shall be. It cannot change or pass away. So we jumped into this. Hopefully that was a good conversation about ether. I'm going to go to Sister Silza and we'll keep going in the questionnaire. Sister Silza? Um, Islam, to get a little bit more context. 
Hang on, Mo. We, uh, you said 11, right? Yeah. Okay. You were just saying two. Islam, 23 and 24, to get a little bit more context. Okay. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it's instruction number 23. Oh. Somebody's on mute. Let me help somebody get it. Islam, Islam, absolutely. Nah. Uh, and it's somebody, somebody is unmuted, but it's okay because you're not making a lot of noise, but we can hear you. I don't want you to accidentally say something that you didn't want us to hear. Uh, Islam, Brother William, babe, you can mute up. For oh, that's Brother William, but it's by the, that's my brother. Islam, Brother brother uh, Everett, praise Allah. Islam. Islam. Um, and, and for so anyone else that may not be aware, no one else is unmuted. Okay, praise Allah. Cecilia, you're, I think you're unmuted. Oh, my. Okay, and I'm making system how many co-hosts. Um, so regarding ether, Cecilio says, read, yeah, this, let me put this in context, right? Mm -hmm. And this whole story starts on 19. Jesus starts talking about there is no evolution. There is no Big Bang Theory. You know, what actually happened was starts on 19. Mm -hmm. The law is on record book we read. The triune law breathed forth and stood seven spirits before his face. The Hebrews call these seven spirits Elohim. Jump down so we don't, so for, you know, for sake of time, he, uh, Jesus said in instruction 23, they call these ether planes the plane of protoplast of, let me, actually, let me read the context. From a law's own record book, because some things you just can't speed through. From a law's own record book, we read, the triune law breathed forth and stood seven spirits before his face. The Hebrews call these seven spirits Elohim. This gets to the part about Elohim versus Ether, which is good too. Mm -hmm. And these are they who in their boundless power created everything that is or was. These spirits of the triune Allah moved on the face of boundless space. And seven others, some people say seven ethers, seven others, seven ethers. They wonder if that's a, this is a typo. And seven others were, and every other had its form of life. I think it's every ether had its form. Every other plane. Seven, I think it could be, I also you read it, think about it, seven other planes. Those seven Elohim made seven others, they made seven planes. And every other plane had its form of life. These forms of life were but the thought of Allah clothed in the substance of their ether planes. Men call these ether planes the plane of protoplast, of earth, of plant, of beast, of man, of angel, and cherubim. These planes, with all their teeming thoughts of Allah, are never seen by eyes of, of, of seen by eyes of men in flesh. They are composed of substance far too fine for fleshy eyes to see. That's that ether again. Going back to the ether. Is a double. We, we, we ain't gonna go too far into this because this is a whole month long discussion. But I just want to touch on it just since we touched, we, we stepped into it, we tipped into it, and still they constitute the soul of things, right? These substances that are far too fine for fleshy eyes to see, they constitute the the uh, the soul. Is it the soul of things? Everything is made of a thought. So the thought is the soul. And that what I thought hits the ether and begins to create. The ether allows any thought to germinate. Right. So that's the soul of the chair is that the thought that somebody said it's going to be a chair and you and it connected with your thought. There's chairs. It, you know, this is the type of chair that we have in the room. And all of us, somehow your your mind creates the universe around you, your thoughts. But that thought has a, initially had an initial thought deep inside of you. Constitutes the soul of things. Now, where was I? 23. And men call these ether planes the plane of protoplast of earth, this plant of beast, of man, of angel, of cherubim. Uh, I was actually in 24. Sorry. 25. And with the eyes of soul, creatures see these ether planes in all the form, uh, in all the forms of life. Right? And this goes on. That's actually a very, it actually is a whole uh, lesson in itself. Uh, let's jump back into the, I was going to ask a question. I'm going to go back into the questionary. We're going to split a split second there. There's one key question that I wanted to hit before I spin off into some research that I want all of us to know, right? Mundane, but kind of highly specialized. Let's go to the top of page 
16. We're back in the questionnaire. This book that looks like this. Question number 16. How did the prophet begin to uplift the Moorish Americans? Okay, everybody all together. Thank you, Brother Peter Zim. How did the prophet begin to uplift the Moorish Americans? By teaching them to be themselves. By teaching them to be themselves. Let me switch the camera back. What is our religion? Islamism. I almost I'm, I want to ask what is Islamism, and but I what I will say to get to the crux of where I'm going is Islamism is an old time religion. Islam was not created by the Prophet Muhammad in the uh, you know the fifth and sixth uh, sixth and seventh in the fourth and fifth century uh, A.D. It actually was united by the Prophet Muhammad. Islamism is what our, our ancestors from Adam have been teaching all along. Even the prophet Jesus, when we read our Quran, you see that Jesus is talking about a law and he's referring to the old prophets and he's teaching the everlasting gospel, which is an unchained instruction coming from the great God Allah, right? Let's read that question. Um, I'm in the questionary, page uh, three, question number 41. What is the everlasting gospel? It is a saving power that comes from Allah through our ancient fathers by his prophet. That's Islamism. And what I will ask you is we are Muslims. I do hereby declare that you are a Muslim. This is a nationality card I'm pointing at. I do hereby declare that you are a Muslim under the divine laws of the Holy Quran of Mecca, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. The, holy, the laws of the Holy Quran of Mecca. So as a Muslim, there's certain things that we do want to make sure that we are Clear on. I'm putting the nationality card in there. That is what we're looking at down here for those that are in the room. And um, one of the things in order to be a Muslim, there are, I'll just touch on real fast. This is a quick, fun, you know, fact. Because if you're a Moorish American, you're a Muslim, you want to be a decent Muslim. You want to be a standard Muslim. You want to know something about being a Muslim other than we read also, we honor the Holy Quran of Mecca. Right, we have the Holy Quran of the Moor Science Temple of America, but there's another book that's called the Holy Quran. You you better have know what it is and open it up. And of course, we all do, and we all have. So my question would be, uh, this to stay sharp, and no sheiks can answer this, but anyone else, whoever's quick on the draw, raise your hand. I see Brother Serrano Bay's hand is up. Brother Serrano Bay, right after this question, I'm gonna go to your uh, point. What are the seven pillars of Islam? which are like the basis of every Muslim should know the five pillars. I call them seven. <laughs> Pardon. I'm, I'm like Brother Peter's. I'm a little bit low on sleep. <laughs> the, what are the five pillars of Islam? Brother Oni Bay can't answer either because I know Brother Oni Bay knows. Anyone, I'm going to go to gallery mode so I can see any new hands come up. If Brother uh, Serrano Bay, if you want to answer this, well, you're a sheep. You can't. Brother, Brother Ron? Islam, Brother Martin, what, wow, you know already. What are the five pillars of Islam? Well, the black would say uh, love, truth, truth, Very truth, good. Justice. Peace, freedom, and justice. And I'm going to say you're correct. They're actually the soul, like we said, the, the that constitutes the pillars. The, so, the essence of the, the pillars of Islam are those five principles, our principle. Prophet broke it down to the last compound. But there's a, in, to the mo most traditional Muslims, right? Because part of one of the things we teach the prophet, when you look around, you'll see the hand press of unity is everywhere. It's on the charter right here, Brother Ronald. This document is one of our most important documents in the temple. It gives us the authorization to operate as a temple. It's called a charter. There's a hand press right there. And, and a, a, the first we call a second symbol on the charter, right? Of 10 symbols. There's also a hand press on this nationality card. I think it's in the middle. Yeah. Let me tell me, am I, am I right or wrong? It's in the middle. You look on the divine constitution and bylaws we read at the beginning. It's on the top and on the right. You got one on your, in your possession, those, those bylaws. That hand press represents quietly one of the, 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 the core teachings that we learned here in the Moore Science Temple of America, which is unity. So in order to be unified, with, we want to, want to make sure we have a decent amount of unity with the Muslims that may be studying the mosque, although they, they don't understand that this is even better with the prophet brought us, the more science temples, that it's the next degree up. Um, so in order to be unified, you want to know there's some basics. 
So they have five pillars that they that they utilize. I'm gonna go to Brother Jordanel. I saw Brother Jordanel's hand. Brother Jordanel, um, can you tell us what the five pillars of Islam are? Islam, Grand Sheik. Islam. First, I want to rise. Islam. First, I want to rise and give praise to the great God Allah and honors to His Prophet. Honors to everyone in in attendance. Honors to everyone on Zoom. Honors to our Grand Sheik. Honors to our Chairperson. Um, peace, everybody. Praise Allah. Peace. All right, peace. The first, the first pillar will be um, profession of your faith. There's no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his messenger. Mm -hmm. um, the second one will be prayer. Um, I know there's fasting and pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the, the other one is like giving to the needy. Mm -hmm. uh, it almost sounds like you said six. Uh, did you see, so let's give names to them. The confession of the faith is called Shahadatain. You named that one, it's correct. Uh, I think he said prayer next, Salat. Salat. Uh, yeah, he said uh, the pilgrimage is uh, hot. Hot. Yeah. Uh, the holy month. This might have been the one that you dropped, uh, left out. The holy month of Ramadan. Oh, he did say fast. I thought I heard him say fast and then pilgrimage. And then uh, some, uh, Zakat is the charity. You know, giving. So it would really be Shahadatain, uh, uh, Salat, which is prayer. Shahadatain is decoration. There's no God but Allah. And, Prophet Noble Ali is his prophet, but most Muslims will say Allah is his prophet. Uh, Salat, which is your obligatory prayers, most Muslims, uh, they go by five a day. Um, we go by three. And you have charity, which is called uh, zakat. Uh, then you have Ramadan and you have Hajj. So just a fun fact, most thank you, Brother Jordan L. Spot on. Let me go to Brother Serrano Bay. You had a question, Brother, a uh, statement, Brother Serrano Bay. You have the floor. We're going to keep moving fast because the clock is on me. Islam, praise Allah. Um, first, I rise and, and I give all praise to the great God Allah. I give honors to his holy and divine prophet, Prophet Nubu Jwali. And I give honors to everything that pertains to Islam. I give honors to our green sheik, more science of number 34, uh, Brother Y. Cyrus Hill. My, my question was, um, based off of a lot of the dif differentiations of what the Moorish Americans practice versus um what is perceived as Islam in the East. My question is, did Prophet Muhammad pr also practice the old time religion? Islam, Islam. Um, I, I would, that's an interesting question because it's, it's a great question. That's a Brother Serrano big question. I'm going a, I'm to a revert to, you know, how to get the uh, call a friend, call the audience. I'm going I'm to follow on my logic. I'm going to follow on my logic and I'm going to say that, um, yes, because in the story of Prophet Muhammad, his core argument is that uh, the um, the Muslims of Mecca, uh, including the Quarish or his his family, his tribe, they were practicing uh, polytheism. They had a lot of different idols and they were worshiping different things. And he was saying, God, we, we were given instructions that we are monotheists. And this was before he got the first revelations and before he realized he was even a prophet. Before all of the battling and the establishing uh, his conquest of Mecca, after being driven out first because he was just trying to tell him. Um, let me see, somebody got a loop going on. It's okay. Yeah. Um, I would say that, yes, uh, Prophet Muhammad was um, studying Islamism. The, what Islam was um, prior to uh, the uniting of Islam. And let me also add this bit into it, and then I'm open up the floor for any other input, you got to remember, in the grand scheme of things, right, I'm going to pan out now, I'm going to look at the grand scheme. You got from Adam, who first started to test off. Remember, Adam was challenging the Quran. That, you got to stick, stick with the foundation by Iblis, that he's not a perfect creation. They are, we are, not perfect creation. Can I test him? Allah granted the respite for man to be tested, and man is still in the middle of a test. And that we, we, come, we will come to the end of the test on the judgment, uh, which is also written in the Quran. So midway in, you have uh, the life of uh, Jesus. And Jesus is trying to teach something, and they, he's interrupted by Rome. We always refer to the question 74 and 75. Uh, where are you going, Satan? I'm going to him from the earth, seeking whom I may devour. Two people talking. And, it, and G Jesus is a part of that representation, the higher self and the lower self. Jesus represented the higher self 2,000 years ago, and I believe Rome represented the lower. Rome tried to silence a prophet. 
And then for the first time, they said, we, you know, I don't know if they were sick of the prophets or sick of having to deal with the truth that wasn't really working with their system. They silenced Jesus and put a turn around and put a book out. There's a lot of stages in between, but for sake of time, they put a book out. So Prophet Muhammad was, was living in an era where this book was there. Remember, Prophet Muhammad is uh, fourth century, and I think passed in the sixth century. I always get his dates wrong. But the Nicene Council was second century, 300, 325 AD. So he was around during the time of the Bible and the, the, the expansion of Christianity, which was all is kind of mixed up what they're saying in that in the Bible. Jesus is the uh, is God and man manifest, and all you got to do is um, you know take communion and drink the blood, and then you're fine, and you're born in sin, and all these things. Prophet Muhammad had to correct that. So, um, what Prophet Muhammad was, I know he wasn't. He's not listed as being Christian. So I would also say that um, what he was practicing. Uh, was a pure form of Islamism, not really confused by Christianity. So again, I would say yes, um, because in the story of Prophet Muhammad, we don't read any references of him being a part of any church or being a, a, a Christian in any way. Uh, hopefully that wasn't too confusing. I see Brother Oni Bay's hand and Brother Turner Bay's hand, but I'm going to Brother Oni Bay first. Islam by Oni Bay. I want to say a quick question, um, but uh, say my opinion. When you say that the uh the more science simple, the old Quran and more science simple is is more ancient than the um old Quran and Mecca, because I would say like it, it does say that it's ancient lesson. Islam, Islam. That's that's also a great question. And this is coming from Brother Oni Bay, who more if you don't know, you should know, you know, we all know our brother, Brother Oni Bay comes into the Moor Science Temple of America from the mosque, which is a powerful demonstration. He was he was he was a faithful member of the mosque when he joined. I will still remember keenly. Um I, I would say that uh, yes and no. It's a it's a book that was compiled by the prophet in 1927, so in that sense it's new. But what the prophet did is brought us back to our ancient um, creed, and that's what it says when Sister Silzil read about those secrets. The reason these secrets were kept by, back from the outside world, the Muslims had these secrets. Let me read the exact listen less uh, word of uh, sentence. The lessons of this pamphlet are not for sale, but by the sake for this. But for the sake of humanity, I am a prophet I'm, and a servant is worthy of his hire. You can receive this pamphlet at expense. The reason these lessons have not been known is because the Muslims of India, Egypt, and Palestine had these secrets and kept them back from the outside world. And when the time appointed by Allah, and uh, when the time appointed by Allah, they loosened the keys and freed these secrets. And for the first time in ages, have these secrets been delivered in the hands of the Muslims of America? So that speaks to the Quran. These are secrets that have been around for ages, and the Prophet brought them back into the public, into the light, and gave them to us because we desperately needed it. Uh, um, I see, I want to go to Sister Seals Hill. We got Brother Turner Bay, Brother Peters Hill, and Brother Jordan. And I want to get all these in. Brother Jordan Hill is the last one. I'm going to say more if you can, kind of keep it tight after Brother Peters Hill, because I want to get, I want to touch on something before we close. Or get Islam. Out. Islam. Praise Allah and praise the Prophet and honest, of course, to everything um, that our very sheep will forgive. Honestly, I was just going to say this in um, conjunction with what Brother Bonnie Bay asked. I think it's a different setup um, in the literature, right? Um, when it came to the Bible, the Bible had the Old Testament, which in the Judaism, they called the Torah, and then it had the additional portion, which is now the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And so now it's com combined. Now, when you look at the Holy Quran of Mecca, it's more of a, a running course from the old time as far as from the Old Testament through. So it's more like an accurate record keeping. Um, mm -hmm. And I look at our Holy Quran more as a, um, utilizing it, telling you that these information that you already have, because it draws the authority from there. But I think it's more of like a guiding light and step on how to execute those things. So for people who weren't brought up under the ways of Islam and under the ways of the old time religion, this allows for you to be able to kind of focus in 
on the key points to better your character. Mm -hmm. and, and so I would say that they run together, right? Mm -hmm. Because he said these are missing here out of the Bible. But now when he speaks to those things, I think it's just, again, one of those things that kind of helping you to better study and know yourself. So I, that's that's kind of, that's more so how I would say that. That's the key. Praise Allah. Very, very great point, Sister Silzil. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to be quickly to say, uh, to kind of camel walk with what Sister said, um, the Prophet, Prophet Muhammad corrected the mistakes of the Bible. That's what she just said. And it's true. It created some errors and confusing. The Prophet Muhammad corrected the errors. Uh, plus the, the Holy Quran of the Moor Science Temple of America, switching this from the Quran of Mecca to the our Quran. I think it's like a graduate course even to the Quran of Mecca. Because you can't, what the Prophet is talking about here is you can't find it in the Quran of Mecca. But it it, it, it it sits perfectly. It's, they, they support each other. Mm -hmm. um, and then finally, I will say for those that are interested and they maybe never heard this before, when they assembled the Bible in the Nicene Council, they selected from a lot of books the same way the prophet did. And the books that they left out, or the, there's a collection of them, and it's called the Apocrypha. For those who are not familiar with the Apocrypha, there are books that, are, that were from the same time of the books from the Old Testament of the Bible but they weren't used. They like, oh, we don't want to use this. We don't use that. And then they they took those leftover books and put them in a, a document called the Apocrypha. Uh, we got. I'm gonna stick to the the route that I was going. Um, I, I was gonna go Turner Bay, Oni Bay, uh, Petersville, Oni Bay, and then brother um, Lord L. Wow, brother Lord L, you made it. Yes, Islam. Yeah, Islam, Islam soldier. Islam, I thought you gave up. I, I I I thought I was gonna tell you to give up. That that sound like a lot. Praise Allah, my brother. Made it to the meeting. Yeah. If you got to crawl, I'm gonna go to Brother Turner Bay. Brother Turner Bay, you have the floor. Islam, rise and give praises to Allah, honors to the Prophet, and everything. <clears throat> the chairman, the sister chairman, gave honors to. Yeah, that was exactly my thought, and specifically, it's in Surah Al Madia, verse three. He said, "Today I have perfected your religion for you, mm. and have completed my favor upon you." And I have chosen Islam for you as a religion. Now, if we recall, at that time, they were it was a, they was representing or, or worshiping a lot of gods, and what he did was clear the way. So it wasn't just you know Christianity; it was just, it was a whole lot of gods, even even in the Kaaba. So what he did was clear the way. And if we remember, if we look at history, the Muslims is the one that allowed people to even worship who they wanted to worship as long as they was viewed as you know true believers they didn't hate or dislike anyone and they loved the christians they loved the jews it's even mentioned in the Sora, you have true believers that are jews and you had true believers that are christians but it's the ones that fortified the lies that was spread as you were speaking about uh what the nasreen uh council did that was the ones that was called like most most often the infidels or the ones that stopped people from from paying homage to the religious sites because the Muslims was the first ones that was guarding everyone no matter whether you, no matter your religion if you was coming to pay homage to any of the religion the religious sites including the uh so-called Jewish site you know they was the ones that was protecting everybody on the way to the to the to the religious sites with that, I say peace. Hey, such an interesting conversation. I got another little jewel for, uh, we hope we don't overload Ronald, but I got a feeling uh, he, 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 he'll be able to keep up with us. Yeah. You know, we, as we talk about Islamism, I, I, one of the ways that I've always looked at it is from learning from the prophet, I realized there's not three religions. It's not Judaism, Christianity, Islam. This is all one religion. And it got split in half. The same people that Romans that killed Jesus, they create they created truncated it into three by creating Christianity in the middle and having to explain why it's there. They created three different religions. One of the powerful things to prove that they're all the same, and this is the gym, this one with the night ale, but Leander Bay, praise Allah, is that the holy Quran of I mean the holy the the uh, holy city of Mecca. Where the Muslims go for that fifth uh, uh, fifth pillar, Ramad uh, Hajj. You always see here about the Muslims go, they go to Mecca and they go to this building and they go around seven times. And it's called a pilgrimage. And it's this, this once in a lifetime event if you have the opportunity to. 
that building that they go to in Mecca, dramatic pause, was built by Moses. Let that sink in for a minute. So wait a minute. That's why they say uh, 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 built by Abraham. Pardon me. Yeah. It built by Abraham. I, I can hear. I heard brother uh, <laughs> Ferguson L gave me a as long. Uh, 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 Abraham and Ishmael. Right, so right, right. Abraham, that might as well. That's the same. The same as it's like one of the. That's Abraham and Moses, two Jew, Jew, uh, um, you know, major prophets of Judaism. The Jews believe. Abraham built the Kaaba, but the Muslims go there. And actually, technically, if Abraham built it, the Christians should be there too. So what is long is going on? Brother, um, I, I hear Brother Turner Bay, but Brother Turner Bay, we so jammed into the weeds right now. I gotta keep going. I gotta go to Brother Only oh, Bay. We're not hear you. wrong. You can't hear us? Brother Turner Bay, can you hear us? Can anyone else online can they hear us? Yeah. Okay. All right, we got we got you now. Okay, okay, brother Oni Bay bypasses it because we're gonna, we're gonna go into the corner. I saw one other hand it went down. I thought it was brother Jordan. Hill. Brother Jordan, Hill, you all all well? It's on Grand Sheik. Yes, I'm all well. I just wanted to add that um, Prophet Muhammad said he follows the religion of Abraham. That's that old time religion yes. because Islam in essence just means peace, and peace always existed and always will. Wow. So what is going on? Now, we don't have time. We blew our time. I blew the time because we were 15 minutes late getting started. I will show this on my screen. We were going to go into a second week of this information um, about the prophet uh, refers to us suffering from uh, European psych an act of European psychology. In one of his articles, he says the fact that we don't know what our name is and who we what our nationality is and this group of people, who they are, who where they come from, that is only based on an act of European psychology. Because if you're educated, you go to a library, spend it a couple of hours, you'll, you could easily figure it out that we are actually the Moors, and which will make us Moorish Americans in this country based on the rules, right? Wow. Um, and uh, but it, that act of European psychology, we have been re uh, reviewing, um, you know, we, we as we do every year, uh, this document. Um, which actually speaks to a couple of different factors. Ah, oh, I don't have my TV screen on. Let me take a minute more and turn on my screen. I'm going to go to, somebody had their hand up a second ago, Sister Silzo, while I set up. Is that Brother Peter? You got the floor for a minute while I set the TV up in the room. And then we're going to come back to this in secretary time. It was, um, it was all about the uh, Muhammad. So my question was, um, I actually had a question, and then the question was kind of um, answer the question I think before. Um, with, with, with when Muhammad was sent to, to the Arabians, where, where, where were they? Were they still in Saudi Arabia, or were they in Egypt? And, um, they were in, in the, most of these, this, this, this drama that plays out in Muhammad's life happens in uh, Mecca, in the holy city of Mecca. They were actually at the site of Mecca, uh, with all of those um, pagan images, if you will, engraven images, um, idols all over the Kaaba or where the Kaaba is now. Muhammad was, it was, you know, he basically was fighting to change that. So that's more so Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. So in, the, in that case, um, our prophet speaks of Egypt with us. Mm -hmm. We're speaking on if our, if our instructions are more ancient. Than, 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 um, that I think it's the, it's the same essence, right? It has the same essence, but what I thought that what we brought, we came and brought us with something specific, you know, and it was specific for the most Americans. But he um, said, um, but it's in nationality, it's God in this now. But it, it's something, and, and him being a uh, uh, Egyptian adept, and he went over there and studied, him going and studying. That's that science also was a huge key for, um, for our nationality. Very, very good, and also a very interesting broad topic. What topic? What I would say is that what the Prophet uh, Noble Dua Ali gave us is so vast, it comes in gi gigantic leaps of eras of time. He deals ancient and modern, he toggles seamlessly, effortlessly between ancient and modern, and it can be very confusing. 
I would say that the holy city of Mecca, he gives particular emphasis in. He actually calls it in our questionnaire the Garden of Eden. What do we call the Garden? The Garden of Eden is Mecca, right? What is the modern name for the Garden of Eden? Question 54, the answer is Mecca. But Egypt, he gives as chapter 47, which we're in, the capital empire of the dominion of Africa, because Egypt is very important in the modern, I would say on the modern side of the era of time, you know, more modern than Abraham and Moses is, you know, although Abraham and Moses were both in Egypt, like, <laughs> Egypt is kind of like on the cusp from ancient into modern, right? Because, how do you know that? Because in chapter 47, it says the first inhabitants of Africa came from the land of Canaan, right? Cush and Ham, which are the names that are carved into the actual land of Africa. They came out of the land where Mecca's at. So that's the separation. You could say, so the prophet is painting with a broad brush. He's at once saying Mecca is critical in the Quran, everything is critical, but Egypt is also in, in, in the modern as time goes and lapses, basically. That's the quickest answer I can give. I got to get into the Quran. I want us to review the list of the contributors to European supremacy. So we need to go over this information. We're not going to get to it today. We basically had a wonderful conversation about in the lead up. But we'll read this during secretary time. I wanted to quickly review those doc, those four. Actually, this number numbering is off. I apologize. These uh, four papal bulls uh, from the doctrine, what's called the Doctrine of Discovery, uh, including Ilias Quia, 1442 by Pope Eugene, Dumb de Verses, 1452 by Pope Nicholas V, Romanist Pontifex, 1454 by Nicholas V, and Intercatera, 1453, by Pope Alexander VI. You need to be familiar with these. You can open them up and read them in, in, in whole. Um, and also, I wanted to review, the, we, went over, we, we were going over the four contributors, major contributors to this um, European uh, psychology, including John Frederick Blumenbach, Arthur de Gubernau, Charles Seligman, Melville, J. Herskovitz. We touched on Charles Seligman last week, but we did the same thing, so we didn't get into it. You can look them up on your own. We talked about how he created the hermetic hypothesis. During the secretary time, we are going to read about Arthur de Gubernau. And for the children that are in the room, uh, Arthur de Gubernau actually, of course, created the theory of the master race, being that the Europeans are supposed to be some master race. But in actuality, we know in this era of time now, that uh, idea basically uh, you know, flatly failed. Um, when you think about sports um you know you think about intellectual inventors right here there's an example for the children the three uh three asiatic children uh, including a young brother named Ram ramarni a little sister named anala nala and another sister named uh an and anana alana have the highest IQs ever in the world. The three smartest people in the world are Asiatics. Um, and I was, I'm gonna read a little bit about them. So you, you know, hopefully it will inspire uh, the youth as well as all of us to really understand there's some major lie that is collapsing. You know, and Arthur de Gubernau, this was a very, um, you know, it was a very interesting theory, a very bold theory that he had, but it's flat wrong. Um, so we'll read that during secretary time. I want to go right now into the Quran with the few minutes that we actually have remaining. Um, we are in chapter 47. Um, this will be the, probably the final week for chapter 47, which I want to stay longer um, because it's so much. Uh, but we want to move on uh, in next week to chapter 48. And actually, we're going to hit the end of the Quran after this last um, review of this chapter. We'll be able to go back to chapter one soon. I think we've been in the Quran for years we, you know, we've been it took us years to get through um title of the chapter is egypt the capital empire of the dominion of africa now uh, we discussed the the massive uh concentration of information and what this chapter represents at one level although it, it is not an um implied trust and express trust as the more say, oh, this is this is the trust that the prophet left us that we're supposed to stand on. That's actually the opposite use of the term. If anything, it would be an implied trust, but the prophet implies in the face of what the prophet was uh, intended us to do. Um, but it's an interesting concept because the prophet does put a major claim in this um, uh, chapter for us. Uh, so we read through some of the... the there's power in the heading. There's power in the first few verses, which starts off talking about this ancient Canaanite, which is Noah. 
and the, and Noah's family were in Canaan land in the mid in the Middle East, basically what they call today. And his uh, Noah's grandson Cush uh, and his son Ham were the first inhabitants that crossed over and went into Africa, and they inhabited Africa. And then it starts talking about these massive eras of time and all these things that have actually happened. Um, you know, from Atlantis, the, 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 you know, the inhabiting of the Americas over here where we're at and, and how we have been here all of this time and how we're all related. Um, it talks about um, the engineering of Egypt and creating of canals that cross from Egypt over to here. Um, I want to end, actually, I want to jump down to the end of this chapter where it has a very interesting section. Um, and it starts off in instruction number 15. And I, I want to discuss 15, 16, and 17 and the ramifications of what's being said here, uh, just so we all can have a kind of a firm understanding and just mainly to point out what the prophet is pointing out. He makes a very interesting point here. And I'm going to see if I can get um, Sister Harmony, if you can read instruction number 15, I'll get Sister Seals to read 16. And maybe Brother uh, Verbenson, if you can read uh, the last uh, instruction number 17, if you need a uh, pull on this one on the back table. Um, Sister Harmony, can you read instruction number 15? Yes, I'm Grand Sheik. I have a sleeping baby on me right now. Okay, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do that for you. Praise Allah. Uh, it reads, the time has come when every nation, every nation must worship under its own vine and fig tree. And every nation must confess its own. I'll say what that means. Well, somebody tell me what that means. That should kind of jump right out at you. I want to see if you can. Uh, um, I was about to call you. See the last part being like uh, Islam. Islam. Hang on, Moors. We we in the middle of muting them out. Sorry, brother Nido. Say that again. Um, you read about, um, about the nation, and it's not in sixteen. Mm hmm. That you left out, and every tongue must confess his own. Oh, uh, let me read it again. Actually, if that if it came, if I did read it wrong, I maybe I just skip lines. Yes, sir. I said that, uh, the time, and I want you to speak to it if you can, Brother Nightdale. The time has come when every nation must worship under its own vine and fig tree, and every tongue must confess his own. What what is that? What is that line by standalone? Take it out by itself. What is it saying? It talks about the vine and fig tree. And every nation, it's, it's, it basically to me, it's, it's saying you got to know who, where you came from. What is the covenant of the great God Allah? Honor thy father and thy mother, thy, thy days may be long upon the earth, land which the Lord thy God Allah have given thee. Right? That's the fifth commandment. You better know where you came from. If you don't know where you came from, how are you going to find me? Realize that you're connected to the great God Allah. The time, I'm going to read it again. The time has come. It's time. More is lined up. We're getting close to the judgment. Or, or you've been out of a position for too long. When every nation must worship and under its own vine and fig tree. Worship part of your customs, part of your nationality. Where are you from? What are your customs? Stop, get out of other people's houses and yards and you're trying to be somebody else. Be yourself. It's time for you to worship. And the most important part of any nation or nationality or culture is your belief system. It's time for you to worship under your fig tree and for every tongue to confess his own, right? Speak for, speak for yourself. Let's go to Brother brother Verbenson is already standing. So if you can read 16, Praise then we'll have Sister Seals will read 17. Praise, Praise Allah. Allah. As long, Brother Verbenson is on you, beloved. Through sin and uh, every nation has suffered slavery due to the fact that they honored not the creed and principles of their forefathers. Yes, mom. Through sin and disobedience, right? Mm -hmm. Um, every nation has suffered slavery. That's the that's the kicker. Wow, what, what's going on there? How did that? What what is what does that mean? What did we do? We did what? Sin and disobedience. Every nation has suffered slavery, and I wanted to see if the Moors could give any examples on other nations that suffered slavery. That's the probably the hardest one. You have to dig through some history to really connect all of those. Somebody might have something handy. And then what what disobedience did we do? That's the other part. Sister Silzil. That's fine. I'm just gonna. 
Praise Allah is already given, but praise Allah again. Praise I'm Allah. I'm gonna just say that Europe, we know that Europe suffered slavery, and mm. we know that it was mm. at the hands of the Moors. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. We know that we can still trace that mm -hmm. throughout history now, even back to their ancient coins, dollars, and even just some of the physical features mm -hmm. and genetic testing um, mm. that have actually proven certain things to be the case now. Mm. So, and when I say honor not the principles and pleas of their forefathers. It also went back into not having already set up their own military, so to speak. When I mm -hmm. set up their own military, they weren't certain defenses prepared for themselves. The inhabiting with animals and certain things allowed for them to now be open to needing somebody to teach them something, which now lets them let them be kind of vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. like, That's a well, very good example. Yeah. I, and that you know, the part about peace, the part about Europe. Um, you know, if you, you get into some of the history of what's going on in the dark ages or even earlier than that, when mm -hmm. when you read, read about um I'm gonna be respectful as possible. You just read about eight, you know, culture before civilization, what they were doing to each other and how they were with women and men. It was it was it was very brutal and archaic, crazy. And that's simple. And the law site is like, wait a minute, when I created y'all, was y'all weren't doing that. And who are who are whether you're saying what are these people that are doing that or whatever, you know they 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 went into um, stages where they were being enslaved or they were enslaved. I'm not highly specialized in that era of time, but I, I've heard and I've seen different things. Um, there is a uh, statement that I learned from brother, one of the brothers. I won't place him to this about even the name European. Uh, you are a peon. Is how he broke it down. Not going to go there, but I'll, I'll go to what did we do? What are some of the things through sin and disobedience? Well, that means that we did sin, uh, sin, uh, sin and disobedience. Uh, every nation suffers slavery. Well, it says in 17, it gives you the answer. But what, you know, one of the things that we did is in Spain, those last few stages, and there's probably a lot more to that. But one of the really shameful things I saw, we were so out of order in Spain, you know, not only the... Uh, Boab the actions of Boabadil, fighting to see who's going to be leader, and we allowed that to go on. We were we were actually um, uh, ex um, I don't say exacerbated. I'm trying to think of a better word than exacerbated. We were we were allowing that to go on. We were contributing to uh, and, and agitating that type of uh, 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 you know that type of treatment, that type of uh, you know those type of policies. They we, they locked. As a gal out of Granada, and he was a hero that went to go save another city. You gonna let Boabadil lock him out, and we try to fight the Christians? Let him in. That's a he's a warrior. If he's just a regular soldier, but that's a soldier king. You know, but we were really we did not we were not manifesting unity, and also the whole um, enslaving Europeans and purchasing European concubines, all of that stuff is what is that that we were doing? You know, any other examples? This is this is to the sin and disobedience um, portion. Sister Silza. Yes, I mean, just again with what you were saying with Africa, the same concept with um, selling out our own people, if you will. Exactly. So let's just say when the, when the prophet talks about prefer not a stranger to steal my own blood. So that concept of maybe even just having those people that you may have considered, you know, maybe just the criminals, the ones who may have mm. had certain offenses, but you were willing to trade them off to other places mm -hmm. to get and see the worth mm -hmm. in having your people mm -hmm. united. So you kind of um, allowed for there to be gaps yeah. in yeah. their armor, if you will, mm -hmm. by um, letting your people go out. Mm -hmm. Also, accepting gifts, weapons, um, tokens, and, tools, and, yeah. and, trades yeah. and, and things like that, instead of being content right. with what you have and where you are and mm -hmm. understanding who you were, mm -hmm. you kind of still, the greed. Mm -hmm. Greed is our, you know, selling selling your brothers <laughs> and sisters out, prisoners of war, whatever, you don't, that, that was wrong. Sister Silza, can you read 17 to kind of bring it kind of meshes really well with 16? It's um divine instructions from the Holy Prophet, page 59, instruction 17 reads, that is why the nationality of the Moors was taken away from them in 1774, and the word Negro, black, and colored was given to the Asiatics of America who were of Moorish descent, because they honored not the principles of their mother and father. And straight after the gods of Europe, of whom they knew nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to leave the floor open to anyone who would like to speak to any of these uh, particular points. And we got Brother Kalenabe coming in as well. As well, Praise Allah. Because um, there are a lot of stories as you get to get into the history between 1492 
1776. Uh, you know, they're, they're right in there, that era, you know, the, the United States and the, um, you know, in the fall of the Moors in Spain, there was a lot of treachery going on. A ton of treachery. Islam, yeah, Islam. I, hear, I hear someone saying Islam. Is that you, brother, um, Williams Bay? Yes, it is, bro. Islam, you got the floor, um, brother. All right. I would like to give honors to all that has said preceded before, as I stated previously. And I want to say Islam to Temple Number Thirty Four and the Grand Sheik. And I would like to say, um, well, it's a lot has been going on since that time. As the sister said, uh, we were brought over here and stripped of names, uh, nationalities, uh, uh, birthrights, and then forced to take on. And then a lot of us were to a point where a lot of us tried to keep that, and no matter what it took place, what took place still held on, but through time and time of torture and torture, some things just proceeded as they did. But at the end of the day, um, some of us did hold on what we did and we're here. But now today, a lot of us is lost. And as uh, we were blessed to have the prophet to bring this back, and to try to take on what we own and to be where we supposed to be. He gave us the message. He sent the material. All we have to do is just follow through so we don't have to stay in this, I'll call it blind, dumb, deaf state of being. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, we have recognized, but all of us has not recognized. So we can't call them less or not of just say, maybe everybody has to be maybe in guided or or told or educated and that's what we're here to do not to demise or bring up or bring down anyone but to build humanity and that's our job as moors praise allah, praise allah. Very, well, very well said I, I will add and this is a spin on what we were actually talking about with brother everett uh brother e williams bay uh just said that's my older brother by the way too uh brother-in-law um uh, uh, is a very powerful thought that really when you when you break down these lessons that the prophet is is giving us actually I, it happened to me as i began to get into the history the history of the united states and really look because i never wanted to look at it like a bad injury you know you get hurt badly like i don't even want to look and see what happened i never before coming into the more science temple of america wanted to look into american history very closely and when i did and i began to study of the uh reconstruction era and then I thought about the fact that what should have been obvious that in the Civil War, you had Europeans on both sides. On the Union side, they gave up their lives in the hundreds of thousands of them. I think it was the war, the, the death toll of the Civil War was something like 800,000 people, both sides. And afterwards, there were um, people like uh, Hugh Bond, a European uh, lawman out of the South, or Thaddeus Stevens, I think he was a senator out of the South. They were risking their lives. So when the Ku Klux Klan first began to target, they were targeting activists, not just because you're African or American, so-called, or whatever. They were, they were attacking and burning crosses on the lawns of Europeans who were activists trying to activate the Moors in the South. And it was when I learned that there were an army of European women that were coming into the South to try to teach the newly uh, our ancestors, you know, that were newly freed, it made me begin to realize that, wait a minute, you know, whatever is going on, it's really confusing because it's not a clear black and white thing uh, or Asiatic European thing, pardon me for the long term. Um, and then it gets even more confusing where the prophet says, if you try to judge a book by its cover, you get burned up by the start. You try to judge somebody's nationality by the way that they look, you get burned up by the start. You can't do it that way. It's confusing because the United States is a, uh, in, in a certain sense, is a, is a multitude of different nations that are a blend of different nationalities. So um, really what Everett is saying is that that's not the way to try to figure out who the enemy is so that you can attack them. Really, the, the essence of the Moore Science Temple of America is stated in um, instruction number nine, chapter 46, on page 57, which reads... Um, Actually, eight and nine, and this will be the last thing I'm gonna turn over to the uh, the Rossum to the to the chairman. I'm gonna read the warning and turn the Rossum to the chairman. 
It says, the lamb is the poor people, the lion is the rulers and the rich. And through love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, all men are one and equal to seek their own destiny and to worship under their own vine and fig tree. After the principles of the holy and divine laws of their forefathers, all nations of the earth in these modern days are seeking peace. But there is but one true and divine way that peace may be obtained in these days, and it is through love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice being taught and universally to all, to all nations in all lands. And that part is, you know, really what the focus should be on is um, that in less, lessons like um, chapter three, instruction three, you know, uh, blessed are the pure in heart who can give love and not demand love in return. You know, that's tr that's truly the essence. So thank you, Morris. Thank you for the, um, that point, Brother um, Williams, uh, uh, Brother E. Williams Bay. And uh, I see another hand. We're going to roll that into secretary time. I'm going to, at this time, read the warning. Um, you know, most of these, if you want to get... January 15th, 1929, prophet warns all Muslims governors order to read proclamation at each meeting. I hereby inform all members that they must end all radical agitating speeches while at work in their homes or on the streets. We are for peace and not destruction. Stop flashing your card at Europeans. It causes confusion. Remember, your card is for your salvation. Failure to obey these orders will be a severe consequence. We are for love, truth, peace, and freedom. And when these principles are violated, justice then must take its course. Any member or group of members who hold malicious feelings toward the temple or the prophet or violate the divine covenant of the Moorish movement will receive their reward from a law for their unjust deeds. All true Moors will and must obey the law as laid down to them by their prophet. If they lose confidence in their prophet, they should turn in their card button, cease wearing their turban or fast, and return to the state where I, the prophet, found you. This is a holy and divine movement founded by the prophet, Noble Drew Ali. And if the prophet is not right, the temple is not right. The prophet, therefore, is sending out the divine plea to all Moorish Americans that they do their part in protecting their prophet and the temple. This is an everlasting movement founded by the prophet through the will of Allah to redeem his people from their sins by order of the prophet, Noble Drew Ali. Peace. Peace, Peace Moors. Okay. It's not. It's not. First of all, we pray to Allah and other prophets, we want to pray to King of Islam. I'd like to thank the Grand Chief for conducting the class. I'd like to thank all the members for their participation in the class. Praise Allah for allowing us the opportunity to come in these sacred groves and learn the truth about ourselves and our forefathers. Praise Allah. Honey, you got a hand on the floor that we have. You know, a little just mm -hmm. uh, turn it, babe. It's long. I just wanted to, you know, camera walk with the brothers, uh, brother Williams Bay and uh, the Sheik GS, because you know, back then when you get to looking at the information of, you know. Who, when we, what were we doing when we first came here? You know, what, what, what did we believe in? And then when you, you know, get into the law of it, it's like they've really had laws that specifically said we couldn't prostrate in prayer. You know, we couldn't, we couldn't uh, pray to a law or, you know, we couldn't be Muslims. And these, this was direct words that was being used. So they actually knew who we were. But, you know, for me, <clears throat> the exciting time was first in contact with the prophet's words while reading Shank Anta Diop. And it's like, you read Shank Anta Diop and he's mentioning all these events and all these people, but, and, and he's connecting certain dots, but he's not saying specifically nothing. And I'm like, wait a minute. And then you read, you read, you read the prophet's literature, and it's like, oh wow, that's what it really is. So you got the history and all the events and all the people with Shankar the Diop, and it's like, yeah, 
Noble Drew Ali, that's what it is. This is who we are. We are Moors. We are everywhere, you know? With that, I say peace. <clears throat> I'm not peace. Is it showing this? Thank you, Brother Turner Bay. Mm -hmm. Islam, praise Allah. Islam, Moors want to raise their hand so we know. Yeah, Sister E. Jones, man, that's what I'm saying. This song, Sister E. Jones, baby. Islam, for some reason, it's here to the We want to know that this is not the only way. We want to set everything that we're doing on the trip or set the meeting. We want to set everyone in the room. I want to zoom on to everything that to Islam. I have a question. Islam, he says, I don't have any questions. Anyone to answer questions outside. And when you come here, you have to ask questions. It takes a lot. First, I want to take a read from the host. We're not more time to say the miracle. The Bible says, I have no stop to draw me by God, the Father, God, Allah, the great God of the universe, and the demon, the essential force of humanity, back to the five chains of life, the Father, God, Allah. I want to go to chapter three. That's on page seven. No, excuse me. Not, I got my phone. You want that one? My phone. Hey. What page is this? Page 13, chapter 8. I want to start with instruction 12. And you must bear in mind that when man wants to talk or word or do another man, he does wrong for God. If you will serve a lot of people within the heart, you serve any of can and those who are no can. The stranger at your gate will call the people to do wrong. A sister poor helps to leave you wrong to learn and cover not what he's not sure. Then I'm going to go into more literature. Page 13, paragraph 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to be paragraph 5 in its entirety. The heads of all temples, grand sheets, grand secrets must confirm, the, must confirm, confirm to the divine principles of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. They must live the life among the members and be loved even as the prophet is loved. They must not practice the principle of segregation amongst any group in or her temple. I want to make a special note there. And I also want to keep going, let it be you will see that instead of any temple of the Lord's Christ Temple of America, that if there become any grievance that cannot be settled by the head and looked by the problem at once, as a member who's only been a member for three years. My question is when something like this happens, who is that head? How are they supposed to be notified? And uh, what's the proper procedure for being done? Because apparently I'm not doing it right and I have a grievance that's gone unresolved. For like three years now. So my question is, is how do we, who is that person or people or prophet that is speaking to that we bring this grievance to? Because I believe in my perception, it, it is my perception as a person, I would be segregated to um who do I bring the grievance to because I don't know who that could be at this point. Okay. 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 It's a great question, right? Because as you go through many organizations or you just go through any group of people, right? You'll find that there will always be some type of dissatisfaction, right? No matter where you are. You know, you find a nice pair of sneakers, you put them on, you might have them, and then you find something that you might say, look, I paid $500, but this should have been a dentist right there on that part of the left. I'm a lady. The spreading is a little off. How did all of them? What did you do? You know what I'm saying? So I'm, and I, this is not minimizing it, right? I say sneakers because they support you as you move as mm -hmm. you across the pavement. It's one of those things your feet carry you throughout all of life. And so I utilize the sneakers because I consider it as a part of our life and it carry us through our life. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I use footwear as a description. Um, but the the understanding on how the complaints go, so it depends on the different levels of the complaint, right? Member to member, you can communicate to the grand chief, right? Of that particular temple. But also the chairman, depending on when certain things are happening, the chairman also maintains a harmony in the meeting, right? So you might note that something's happening, you may not be able to have it addressed right there immediately, but that may be something you want to bring to the attention of the chairman if it's something that the chairman can maintain as far as peace or something like that, functioning through the temple. Let's just say something as simple as cell phones constantly ringing, somebody's answering the phone. That might be something you want to bring to the attention of the chairman. Now, when you spoke to the aspect of segregation, that also matters, right? There's a portion of segregation. I would say, or separateness or differentiation. When the prophet says the responsibility of, of the more assigned simple America rests on the shoulders of the chiefs and speakers, it doesn't 
that's a form of a separation, right? When they talk about one is true, the other is false. So there's a clear line of division being drawn there. Now, when it speaks back to that part, which I was speaking to, the sheep and sheep is the more scientific of America, the responsibility of the more scientific of America, Western children, the sheep and sheep is that would be the next one I'm just concerned about, right? So now let's just say you had an issue with one of the sheep, right? It's not the head of the temple. You would then again still follow the same format, go to the grand chief. If you had a problem with the grand chief, you would then communicate if you feel comfortable to their assistant. And even to their chairman, because as a chairman, um, the grand chief and the chairman are on power to make loans and force law. You can communicate that also to the chairman, as well as the assistant grand chief, because the assistant grand chief is the assistant grand chief. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. Now, once you do that, it's like proper you can't demand. Once you communicate to them whatever the grievances or the problems are that you're having, you have to give a reasonable turnaround time for the communication. I definitely heard this for three years worth of an existing issue. Totally, totally, totally different. Now, in between the drop and the fall, but then not, not to blame the um, fall due to the pandemic, but everything slows down throughout communication. Not everybody was on the same page even during the, the, um, the COVID pandemic. So many people was like, ah, oh, you need to keep the mask on, you got to get the shots. There were some people telling people to go get shots, some saying, listen, use your remedies, wait out, praise Allah. So even that particular system and design, some things are still somewhat slower as far as everybody trying to reach a meeting. So when it comes to the situation that you see, you should be frank. The term is being communicated on and address. Um, now, when and how to make it collective, that's where the grand governor gets involved, right? So the grand governor is the head of the state, right? And he's also the head of all, all, all the temples. So now it's, this is now a different level. Now, once you follow those channels, you can't communicate to the grand chief, the assistant grand chief, and your chairman in your local temple. You can now communicate to the grand governor. Mm -hmm. When you communicate to the grand governor, now at that point, that grand governor has to now go through the multiple channels in which you've already communicated. But even though it sounds crazy, like a lawsuit. Has anybody ever had a lawsuit? You get a car accident? Mm -hmm. I mean, they could take about five years. To More than five years. It can, it can take. But now, depending on how open and shut of the case it was, this is a little different. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very different. So when it follows through those channels, just know that the communication is happening. Now, there's certain parts of it that you're not going to be relayed on until the time to the point where it's like, okay, we have a discussion. But they are conversations in the world. Right. Well, the difference between adults and children. Mm -hmm. And when you're dealing with adults in your lives, you can communicate with yes, adults. So. Right. And that's so, the aspect okay. of the aspect 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 of I'm, I'm good with that. Thank you. All right. Well, just for the closing out of the thought and of the question, mm -hmm. since it's still being stated, it's something that's moving on to the floor, right? As these things do happen, there may be a speed and a time in which we would want and prefer for things to come to a certain stage of fruition, but it doesn't ultimately just work like that. And so, unfortunately, if you may want something done, it's kind of like a microwave time versus a home cooked meal. It may take a little bit of a difference, but the quality will still also turn out to be a little different. When, once the grand governor is involved, he now has to also reach out to the numerous parties involved, which means that he still has to incorporate that within his daily life and work schedule and temple schedule. And so we still have to be realistic in understanding that the time frame that it will take. We only see each other twice in a week if we're here both days, which equates back to eight times a month. That's not including handling any type of business. That's not including making sure that um, the bills, the lights, handling the things that need to be done and make sure the temple up on a whole is functioning. And so some of these things do take time. But I think um, if you know we're part and parcel of the government <laughs> and mm -hmm. if you understand how mm -hmm. we set up through herd revised statutes, it's herds. Brother, brother Chairman, is it herds? Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. need to say what you mean. Herds revised statutes. Herds revised statutes. There's a, even a setting within law on how things are to process and how they are to go. And so there's information that has to be gathered and accumulated. But depending on the severity of the issue, or the parent, depending on the remedy that each individual needs, it may look different and the time may take a different. Thank you. Okay. And with that, um, say peace. Thank you, Sister Thank you. Chairman. Praise Allah. Praise Allah. You had both. Who was that? Uh, it sounded like Brother Kondinabe. Yeah, it's on, Brother Chairman. It's on, AGS. 
Yeah, I want to give praise to Allah, honor to the Prophet, and thank all the Muslims for their condolences on my brother passing. We really appreciate it. Yo, Allah's the best of plans. And just a short comment on what the Moors was talking about. Just because somebody has a grievance doesn't mean it's valid. So you could bring your grievance to the Grand Sheik to the Chairman. You could bring your grievance to the Sheik Board. You could bring your grievance to the Grand Governor of the State. You could bring your great grievance to the national officials. They might not agree with you. That's why we have a whole process. So just because someone said, I got a grievance, because you say it doesn't mean it's valid. So I'm not saying any particular case, but in general. And there's a process that we go through. And just in the same way, you know, we have certain requirements of our members. And in the period in the past, some members have been asked to leave the organization. And the noble Jew Ali himself had to expel various members. So it says in our laws, you know, go to proper things, the person can be suspended or revoked, or they can be removed as a member of the to plan. So we all have a process to go through. We all have the rules and the regulations that we try to test. And the bottom line is, if we try to learn the love, mm. we all make mistakes, we all make wrong judgments, we all look at our lives and see things that we could have done differently. And what we have to try to do as a people is learn the love and stuff. It's, it's a learning process. To learn to give, learn to grow, learn to move forward. I guess in certain situations where you can't do that, but we gotta go through the procedures that we just went through. Peace and love. Peace. Peace. Praise Allah. Praise Allah. Yeah, brother Turner Bay as well. But Turner Bay, you still did, I don't know if you got a chance to address his hey, Islam. All was well, GS. That wasn't me. Islam. Oh, praise Allah. And if we can, brother first now, um, I can read this real quick section, and then we close out. Oh, we can save it. Actually, it's up to you. I'm actually almost ready here too. I'm more. I'm gonna read um, really quickly. Um, this story. The youth are here. Hopefully, they're able to hear this. Can you see this on your screen, Ramel? You see that on the screen, brother Ronald? Yes. Okay. So we were talking about Arthur the Guba now. Uh, I'll really, really I'll quickly um, go over his, uh, let me see if I got the short version of his belief. Uh, no, it doesn't. It says, um, but let me let me read about the children first. Three Asiatic children, Ramarni, Anala, and, and, and Alana. Actually, I'm only going to read them now. We'll, we'll pick up Arthur de Guba now later. Uh, it may take too much time. I don't want to go too far to the left. It says, the world has produced a good number of geniuses in Asiatic. This actually article says the word black, but we know Asiatic um, children are among this circle. Uh, these children are members of Mensa, which is the world's oldest high IQ society. The, the list of top three children with the highest level of intelligence quote, quote in, uh, in the world has been made public. Wow, Romani Wilford and Anala Beavers and Alana George have the highest IQs ever in the world and are currently considered to be the world's smartest, uh, world's top most geniuses. And Romani, I think I'm reading that right, Romani Alfred, this is the little boy right here, little young man right here. Romani has an IQ score of 162. High, you know, this is actually the highest on this list of three and highest in the world. Higher than Albert Einstein's and Stephen Hawking's. The 16-year-old boy whose IQ is also higher than Bill Gates was only 10 when he wrote a paper on the philosophy of fairness, face-to-face -face, uh, Africa reports. That's the article that reports this, uh, this, this, this paper. Romani Wilfred has an IQ score of 162, photo credit African Leadership Magazine. Anala Beavers, the little girl in the middle, 
And Isla Beavers, at just four years old, and Isla Beavers professed and uh, possessed an IQ of over 145. She could identify each letter of the alphabet when she was just 10 months. In 2014, when she was five years, Anala could recite the name of every North American state and capital on the map. At just 10 months, Anala Beavers could identify each letter of the alphabet. Uh, this is credit to face-to-face -face Africa as well. Uh, and then finally, Atlanta, George, right? Like Atlanta, Georgia. It's interesting how now her name goes. Pretty little uh, sister on the end here. It says, Atlanta, who has an IQ score of 140, is the youngest member of Mensa from the United Kingdom. The four-year-old girl has an obsession with words and numbers. The, the little child who taught herself how to read before starting school, she taught herself how to read before starting school, prefers reciting the alphabet in times tables than singing nursery rhymes. Atlanta George, who has an obsession uh, for words and numbers, has an IQ score of 140. Photo credit Urban Woman Magazine. I mean, you know, that that's just powerful on a lot of different levels. Uh, you know, first and foremost, that they are the top uh, in the world currently. Um, you know, the world has produced a good number of geniuses and Asiatic children among the circle. These ch children are members of Mensa, Mensa uh, which is the world's oldest high IQ society. Actually, I'm looking for something different. Uh, Ramana, Wilford, these three have the highest IQs in the world and are currently considered to be the world's top most geniuses. That's just powerful. Any comments or questions? Um, if not, then I what I will read, I think a good quick summary. Um, we're not going to get into this. I, th I think I'm going to move forward next week. Um, for those that uh, are interested, Ilias Queef, we were talking about the doctrine of discovery. Uh, the first one, Ilias Queef, 1442 by Pope Eugene IV. This, li this um, papal bull licensed the Portuguese to raid the West African coast. I won't read it in its entirety. I will, I'm going to read, um, we got uh, Romanus, Romanus Pontifex here, which I will read the portion of it, which is kind of deep when you, you know, when you hear the actual words. Dum de Versus, uh, 1452 by Pope Nicholas V, grants the Pope's, uh, grant the Pope's blessing to Alfonso of Portugal to capture, vanquish, and subdue the Moors called Saracens, pagans, and other enemies of Christ and put them into perpetual slavery and to take all the possessions, all their possessions and their property. Uh, the third one, should, if this was listed in order, it'd be three and four, Romus, Romanus Pontifex, uh, 1454 by Pope Nicholas V, is a follow-up to Dumb Diverses. Uh, this bull protected the king of Portugal from other Christian nations competing to enslave the same and previously mentioned nations. And then finally, you have Intercaterra 1453 by Pope Alexander VI, uh, granted authority to Spain and Portugal to take all the lands and possessions uh, so long as no other Christian ruler had previously claimed them. And uh, jumping down to here, this is the wording, actual wording of Romanus Pontifex. Um, I'll read this really quickly. Romanus Pontifex, uh, the Roman pontiff, successor of the key bearer of the heavenly kingdom and vicar of Jesus Christ, con contemplating with the father's mind and the uh, and all the several climes of the world and the characteristics of all the nations dwelling in them and seeking and desiring the salvation of all wholesomely uh, ordains and disposes upon careful deliberation of those things which he sees will be agreeable to the divine majesty and by which he may bring the sheep entrusted to him by God into the single divine fold and may acquire for them the reward of eternal felicity and upon pardon for their souls. This we believe will more certainly come to pass through the aid of the Lord if we bestow suitable favors and special graces on those Catholic kings and princes who like athletes and intrepid champions of Christian faith, as we know by the evidence of facts, not only restrain the savage excesses of the Saracens and of 
other infidels, enemies of the Christian name, but also for the de defense and increase of the faith, uh, vanquish them and their kingdoms and inhabit and habitations through those situated in the remotest parts unknown to us. And that's like the introduction of the Pope in the beginning of this charge. Um, this is a law, a papal bull. The said infant, right? The said infant, I'm trying to figure out why that would be written that way. The said infant, I guess that would be infantile, infidel. The said infant, believing that he would best perform his duty to God in this matter, if by his effort and industry at the sea might become nav navigable as, full, as far as the Indians who are said to worship the name of Christ, and that thus he might be able to enter into the into relation with them and incite them in to uh to aid the Christians against the Saracens, right? So that's actually basically trying to uh convince the Indians to participate in this act. It continues to conserve their right and possession, uh, the said king and infant under certain most severe penalties, then express have prohibited in general, have obtained that none unless. Uh, their sailors and ships and on payment of certain tribute and with express license previously obtained from the said king or infant should presume to sail uh, to said provinces or to trade in their ports or to fish in, in the sea. Since we have formerly by other letters of, our, of ours granted among other things free and ample faculty the aforesaid King Alfonso to invade, search out, capture, vanquish, and subdue all Saracens and pagans whatsoever and all other enemies of Christ where, uh, wheresoever placed and the kingdoms, dukedoms, principalities, dominions, possessions, and all movable and immovable goods whatsoever held and possessed by them and reduced and to reduce their persons to perpetual slavery and to apply and uh, appropriate to himself and his successors the kingdoms, dukedoms, this is uh, appropriate to himself, to take, to appropriate to himself his, the Saracens, successors, uh, the kingdoms, dukedoms, country, uh, counties, principalities, dominions, possessions, and goods, and to convert them to his and their use and profit. That's a law. By having secured the said faculty, the said King Alfonso, or by his authority, the aforesaid infant uh, justly and lawfully has acquired possession and doth possess these islands, lands, harbors, and seas. And they do of right belong and pertain to the King uh, to said King Alfonso and his successors, nor without special license from King Alfonso and his successors themselves uh, has any uh, ha has any other even of faithful of Christ, other of the faithful of Christ been entitled hitherto, uh, nor is he by any means now entitled lawfully to meddle therewith. So it's basically once he owns it, no one else, not even another Christian power can come and take away his, where he found him some slaves, uh, Saracens, and took all of this stuff and possessions and children, reduced them to slavery. They're his. You can't come and reclaim it after he claimed it. That is the law. Uh, that is the, that was Romanus Pontifex. Again, uh, Romanus Pontifex, uh, 1454. This is actually before the Moors fell in 1492. I personally believe this This is actually the year after uh, Mohammed II, the, called the Grand Turk of Turkey, nearly conquered um, Rome. Remember, 1453, uh, Mohammed II went with the Ottoman Empire and was invaded. And he got past Greece, conquered Venice, and they, the Vatican could see them coming from a distance. But they turned around because it was wintertime and had to go back. It was winter. And when they went back, um, 1453, um, Mohammed II, uh, they called Mehmet, he died on the way back. He died in the winter on the way back. So they didn't get to continue that. And out of retaliation or fear, 
They 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 issued uh Romanus Pontifex, 1454, the next year. Pope Nicholas V. Peace, Moss. Yay. Yes, Islam. Islam. Give attention to our friend. She does read the financial report. Islam Moss, did we get a count? Um in the room, we have 16 room, and what was online? 17 online? 18 online? Okay. Actually, Grand Sheik Islam, um, I don't want to count Sister Sil Zil as she is going to be counted in the room, okay. and also not to count the computers. <laughs> okay, so we take off, how many is that? Uh, three off? So that was, we, we, we had the number 30. Okay, uh, so let's take off two of that. So it would be thirty-two. We almost had thirty-four, but let's keep it act. Keep it honest. Uh, Islam Moors, oh. Sunday, June the fourth, twenty twenty-three. Um, we took a small collection, a total of uh, that number. A total of twenty-eight um, dollars. Which would include nine dollars for the public collection, ten dollars for uplifting fund, travel fund was six dollars, local building fund was three dollars, and we had an attendance this afternoon, uh, totaling in thirty-two. Peace, most. Islam. Islam. You heard me in the financial report. What's the one that pledged the more? This is your sales here. Islam. I move that the financial report as well as the record of attendance be accepted as necessary to correct the recipient. Brother, our Lord is. I second that motion. It was moved by Sister C. Seals Hill, second by Brother Iron Lord Hill, that the financial and attendance be accepted. The necessary correction at the end. You have the motion, I'm ready for the question. Question. Uh, I'm ready I just want to say this to add for so our record rolls out. Um, since an additional 20 people still need this Praise Allah. Praise Allah. Got it. <laughs> Islam. Islam. Praise Allah. So that'll reflect $40, um, including cash app. That's it. So the uh, total for today was uh, 48. Uh, you want to take that vote? You heard the motion. Are you ready for question? All those in favor, I am. You heard it. We heard it. Islam. All in favor of this motion show by the most vote. We heard in readiness. All in favor of this motion show by the most vote. Praise the Lord. Look at that number the most that have been carried. Yeah, another real quick update. We also, uh, there was a youth summit yesterday, and that also we have to we forget to do the announcements. The camp out is going to be June at Bonnie Spring, Kansas. From the 23rd to the 25th. And then we have the Grand, Grand Governor's Ball, which is going to be July 22nd. Uh, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I think it's going to be in Jersey, somewhere in Jersey. And also, uh, there are going to be two, two more uh, backyard cleanup for Temple 21. I think it's on the 14th and on the 22nd. Wednesday, I think it is. Two more backyard cleanup to help Temple 21 clean up the backyard. Thanks a lot. You gotta keep reminding the more because we keep forgetting about reminding them. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Peace. Peace. Else? Yeah. Yes, if I can. Um, if I can get Sister Scarlett and Brother Ramel and Amari uh, to come up to the front. Oh, Amar Amari's okay. He's out of out of commission. Uh huh. Scarlett, you can come up really quickly. You can up the whole time. Scarlett, stand up. Put your shirt down. Make sure you're Hello. She's okay. Come on, come on, Scarlett. Thank you. 
I am um okay setting up our outro. So um we're gonna move the camera. Come over here, um Mar Mari Romel actually part of it. Get your name in. Come you can step in front of the camera right there, just in the front. Come on, Scarlett. Thought you got away, but you didn't. I want to make sure that you are uh well, like, just like that, so the Morris can see. Can we see you? Yeah, good to see you. Uh, Amari as well. Uh, Ramel. Wait, um, Ramel. Right yeah, 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 yeah. You threw me off this time. <laughs> so, um, remember in the first week, we were going over what? The very first time you came up, we were talking about the, the state that you live in, right? You know the state now, right? Easy, because you did it last week. What state are we in? Yeah. Uh huh. In Scarlet, what city are we in? Mm -hmm. Remember, say it one more time. It's dragged out. Give me some, say me some energy. You on camera? Look, the more's looking. There you go. Say it's right there. That's the camera that they're all looking at you through. Okay, what what, what city are we in, Scarlett? Mm -hmm. New York oh, City. Box. I was about to say, what borough? There's another trick question. She's sleepy. Mm -hmm. What borough are we in? Are we in um we in Queens? Ramel, what we'll borough? Because Scarlett looking real sleepy. She's asleep on her feet. What we'll borough in? I'll give you five five choices. <laughs> Staten Island, the Bronx, Brooklyn, the Bronx. Uh, well, listen to all five and then guess. Staten Island, um, Brooklyn, the Bronx, Queens, or Manhattan. Brooklyn. All right. Pretty good. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so here go the hard questions. Now, these are, and I want you to remember these so the next time you come up, you'll be able to know them for sure. You know what a mayor is, I'm sure, right, Scarlett? You know what a mayor is, right? You know what a mayor is. Romel, you know what a mayor is? He's the, like the leader or the elected leader, top official in the city, right? It's called a mayor. Uh, and forget it. I was going to ask who's the, who's the mayor. We're going to get that the next time. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the mayor uh, of, of New York City, his name is Eric. His first name is Eric, and his last name is Adams, right? Then we also have a um, we have a, a governor. We got a new governor now. Her name is first name is Kathy, and last name is Hochul. And then we got the president. That's the next level up. You should know who the president is. Now, this is the trick. This is, this is the question. Now, you got to remember this for the next time because I'm going to keep calling you up until you get the answer right. All right, Scarlett? Who's the president of the United States? Oh, man. Y'all got to gotta get that part down. We're going to call for help from George Washington, was the president of the United States, but that was the first president. There's, there's been a whole bunch of presidents. Uh, well, a question for the adults in the room would be, what number of question are we on, president are we on now? Um, I think Trump was 46, I was gonna say 47, 47, I don't know. 45 was uh, Obama. Obama. Yeah. Was he Was he 45? He was 45. Yeah. Romel said some of the presidents are on pennies and dollars. Right, dollars. I want you to remember this president. I need you to get this down because if something happens in Ashley, you want to know who the president is because you're a citizen of the United States of America. You know who your leader is because if you need him to do something for you, you need to know. His name is, first name is Joe. You ever heard that name, Joe? He walks like CP3O from Star Wars. <laughs> Joe, last name is. Joe Biden. He almost got, almost got it. Joe Biden is the president. I want you to remember that for the next time, all right? I appreciate your energy, Romel. Scarlett, I'm mad too. You got to wait for all me up. Come on. So you did a good job, though, both of you. Thank you for coming up, though, Scarlett. Peace now, all right? Peace. 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 Funny. Peace. Peace. Very, very, uh, Scarlett is very um, firm. She's very comfortable and confident in that way. Praise Allah for that. I can work with it. Peace, Morris. Oh. Out, yeah, is she's a Pisces. Ah, that's the connection. Uh, Scarlett, you know, I'm a Pisces too, right? So we got to talk. 
So we uh, we were able to. Uh, they had the Young Muslims League event was yesterday in Philadelphia. Um, technically, the Young People's Moorish National League. It was a very wonderful event. Um, the Moors from Detroit crossed, like we said, um, over to be in Philadelphia, which in itself was very symbolic. Um, Philadelphia has a ton of children, probably the most uh, in the country, uh, aside from 71 and Temple 25. And tw Temple for Temple 25 to come and do that in Philadelphia is really powerful. Um, the challenge is we didn't, we didn't have any representation from 34. And I want to give honors to th those like Sister Silza who who I, um, reached out and let me know that she had a conflict that was an impossible mission for yesterday to be there. Um, Sister Cecilia Silza was getting her superhero on, uh, holding down her whole family. Uh, long story short, without going too far into that. And honors to Brother Peter Zill, um, who was, uh, was going to drive down with me on, uh, aside from his, uh, he had a scheduled conflict as well. Um, right. But uh, the Moors were really happy. I ended up having to, you know, jump to the uh, Johnny on the spot and and travel down on, uh, myself yesterday. So I was able to be there with the right. Moors, and they were happy to see some representation because they um, they were they were a little bit. Uh, one of the Moors was candid with me, so they were concerned that there was no one from New York um, that were there. And uh, so I just want to stress this point about this is what we this is what we do. Moors is a hand press of unity. This is about you know being there, showing up, being a family. Uh, and bonding with our family. So what I wanted, what I was, what I'll say is that um, we want to try to regalvanize if we can, Morris, please, for the, I found out while I was there yesterday that the governor's ball on July the 22nd, is it July the 22nd? Yeah, is, 22nd. is actually uh, the Young People's Moorish National, uh, Moorish National League uh, gala event. Um, which was postponed, I think, from earlier, maybe last year or earlier this year. It was supposed to be earlier this year to postpone it. So the governor's ball is the Young Muslims League event. Um, and if we can, you know, try to, we need to work a plan. I'm going to probably approach it differently this time by uh, either appointing someone or, or having discussions about so we can plan in advance who can make it there. We got to get out there, Moors, because the thing is, I don't know if you remember, when Temple 25 came to 34 this year, they came into our temple, the same thing happened. For some reason, we all were not available. Um, this, and this has happened a couple of years in a row. It's, it looks, it's not good uh, di di diplomacy. Um, it's not good diplomacy. And if the more, I would have, if I'm Temple 25, I'm going to begin to read into it. Like, hey, does, not, does Temple 34 not want us to come? to be around them? Do they not want to be around us? Because every time we're looking for them for the easiest, that was like a, it was a, it was a simple demonstration. We weren't there. So if we can, more, uh, especially the families, because this is the Young Muslims League, you, you got it. We would have had the opportunity to blend the children together. You know, they, that was a moment that all of the ones that were there, they will never forget that. It was an awesome event. Um, and they were fixated by Brother Jordan Fuqua Bay, who's a young grand governor of uh, the state of Michigan. Um, and uh, they all, they will all remember that we wanted our youth to be a part of that. So they'll always remember that moment. So if we can, Moors, I'll be, fig I'll, I'm going to figure out a set of calls maybe that we can do that we can, you know, make sure that we are in the building for uh, July 22nd. Thank you. Peace. Yeah. Um, Who's that? Brother Serrano Bay. This song about Serrano Bay. Islam, praise the law. Praise the honor is already given. Um, just uh, future apologies if you hear my daughter in the background making a lot of noise. Um, I asked a question about Prophet Muhammad and the old time religion. Because, um, you know, just based off of, you know, the Ramadan that we had and, you know, having these classes with Brother A. Hopkins, Bay Assistant Grand Sheik, and just thinking about all of the confusion as to... Um, our connection to Prophet Muhammad, and I thought it was a great segue uh, to the question in relation to the old time religion versus, you know, Islamism versus Islam, right? And we know the questionnaire it says that our religion is Islamism, but then when we look in the Moorish guide, uh, the Moorish literature, the the name of the article is "What is Islam?" Right? And in various places, Prophet Nubu Ali, you know, talks about Islam as a religion, and so. 
I think there's a, a confusion in the Moorish paradigm that there is a separation and there is a difference. And so I started to think about where Prophet Muhammad talks about his deen be his and and to to you um and your deen, you know, be unto you as far as you know the customs and traditions and how Islam is expressed. And so I, you know, I wanted to know, you know, your thoughts, Brother Grand Sheikh, and if anybody else had any thoughts about Prophet Muhammad practicing the old time religion. And I thought it was a beautiful answer, brother. Peace and love. Praise Allah. Praise Allah. Just until you say over there. Islam, great question. Um, I'm not going to say that I have um, mm -hmm. but um, I just want to say, what is the name of the first first of a person in whom Jesus was first reincarnated? Right. And it says the Prophet Muhammad, the conqueror. Mm -hmm. And so just with the connection of that particular piece, I think that the part that we're looking for is that um, is, are those customs, right? And aspects of customs never alter the nature of the truth. Mm -hmm. And so there's a remedy that's provided for each particular nation, which is why they needed a different prophet because mm -hmm. there's always a little slight variation mm -hmm. to what their their illness or mm -hmm. their need. Mm -hmm. be. Mm -hmm. Perfectly so, said. Some may have been pushed and encouraged to perform salat um, in those regions. Mm -hmm. where you have a lot of things available at your hand, at your whim, where you don't often have those same moments to kind of stop and reflect. But there is sunlight, where the nature, where the land is bountiful and full, where you have a lot more than what the Asiatic of North America were dealing with. The remedies are going to look a, look a lot different, I would say, mm -hmm. as far as in the uh, visual. But the ultimate goal and purpose, I would say, returns back to the same resounding purpose that oneness is all mm -hmm. but a matter of pounding out the things within your character and using that hammer to own the truth and so it's a part of every part so i would mm -hmm. say even just to the aspect of the fasting and the ramadan we were encouraged to do that in the holy quran but it was expressed a little differently when jesus went into the wilderness and he was talking with himself he went in there and he was fasting he went fasting long in Ramadan. He was over there. He was in there for 40 days, mm -hmm, 40 mm -hmm, nights. You know, mm -hmm. people, people, Ramadan plus the additional days that they do. Mm -hmm. And so I would say that it spoke to those particular qualities. But when you're also speaking to a nation that may have starved at a point in time mm -hmm. where you were eating scraps, where you may not have had meals that you would have wanted to have, you wouldn't have an opportunity to just become obese and overweight because you were struggling. I think that your remedy is going to look a little different when he directly tells you to fast. Mm -hmm. Doesn't necessarily add or, or um, add to the trauma that each nation may have already been facing. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think it's different. Jesus was uh, what we identify Jewish, right? Not Ashkenazi Jewish, but he, he was <laughs> he mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. actually followed Judaism. Mm -hmm. But he was still speaking about peace. And I know Brother Trent, they've spoken to the Jerusalem's. Salam, Salem, mm -hmm. all of them connecting back to the peace and city of peace. And so um, with that, I would say that we all practice the same religion. I would just say that our expression of it is very different. But the garb, fully being clothed, now they all may look different, but they all have a standard cover-up, mm -hmm. which means that you still are practicing that aspect of modesty. And then there's that um, no polytheism, but they honor and they give honors to the different, to the various people who came before them. Mm -hmm. Same concept of honoring my father and my mother. And so I think that's that's something that rings true throughout the prophets, at least that's mentioned on our nationality card. Mm -hmm. Islam. So Islam. Mm -hmm. Praise Allah. If I could, I could speak briefly to that very awesome question. And I'd like to thank you for that, Brother Serrano Bay, that, because um thought never really crossed my mind like that i would say that probably would make a good discussion going forward too because the prophet at once uh uh acknowledges qualifies the authority of islam out of mecca it's on our nationality card we just went over we're declared muslims under the laws of the holy quran of mecca and the article about islam uh what is islam in the Moorish literature, also the section out of the Moorish Leaders Historical Message to America, he's talking about the he's talking about Islam more so than Islamism. So then, what is the purpose for the question? Islamism is that a new or is the old time religion? He says that. Why does he ask if it's a new or the old time? He's saying I'm not talking about Islam because that's a new religion. Islamism 
And I would, I would, you know, we should look into that very carefully, comprehensively. And I would, I would, it makes me think really quickly that uh, Prophet Noble Ali also wants to anchor. Because remember, he's toggling from ancient to modern. He doesn't want us to get confused by when we get into ancient. Well, what were they practicing? That was still Islam. He said Islamism. He covered that because he knew that at some point that could create confusion if he didn't tack it down. We had nationality then. And every nationality has a religious belief, and our forefathers are the first to establish the first religious creed and for the redemption and salvation of mankind on earth. So he goes into those earlier eras, which immediately led my logic to say, well, what is Judaism and where did it come from? And you know, how did it could it be that it was part of the creation when Christianity was created? They said, Well, what do we call what they were doing there? And they they did they name it. I would have to get into that. I never really thought about it like that, but very great question um, and something that we should, you know, I'd be, I'd be open to examine and, and break down going forward. Brother Serrano Bay, thank you for that. Peace. 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 Islam. Islam. That's what they practice in the old time religion. Because it come from, it come from, it come from Adam from the beginning and mm -hmm. everybody, everybody uh, would name uh, Abraham. Mm -hmm. You know, no, that's the old time mm -hmm. religion. Acknowledges, mm -hmm. everybody acknowledges the old time religion, the old time religion. And uh, because even in the in the Quran of Mecca, talk about the children of Adam, you know, talk about the children of Adam all the time over and over, the children of Adam. But we all we all come under the fruit of you know Adam and Eve, you know. So praise Allah more. Praise Allah. It's good. It's a good discussion. I think we we can we can we can reserve a time to. To sit down and and, and, and converse, because because a lot of times you know might be a lot of misunderstanding, especially in the more science of America. Even though even though it says that you know we get our power and authority from the great people of Mecca, you know a lot of times people get misunderstood. A lot of things that more of them misunderstand, and you could ask them questions, you know, even in the back of the questionnaire and also the. The back of the 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 Quran, you know. So good discussion. Praise Allah. You know we can we can we can set aside a good discussion on that. Praise Allah. We can hold on. Praise Allah. All right, man. All set. So we can bring it up the next time, or uh, you know, set it set aside where we can discuss that and do all your do all your research and bring it back. Praise Allah. Praise Allah. All rise, face the east. Either 90 degrees, five fingers on the left, two on the right. Repeat the Moorish American prayer. Allah, the Father of the universe. Allah, the Father of the universe. Father of love. Father of love. Truth. 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 Peace. Peace. Freedom. 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 And justice. And justice. I lost my protector. My God. My God. My, my salvation. My salvation. By day, my night. And by day. By night and by day. Holy prophet. Holy prophet. Holy, holy prophet. Amen. 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 Praise Allah. Praise Allah. Play it out, your horse. Peace and love. Peace. Yeah. The Holy Quran of the Moor Science Temple of America, Circle 7, divinely prepared by the noble prophet Drew Ali, by the guiding of his father God of law, the great God of the universe, the redeemed man from his sinful and fallen stage of humanity back to the highest plane of life with his father God of law. The thoughts of the law are the everlasting of the past before time the big bang boom was doomed to crash man moves on to never ending days to come reality like a fantastic dream to some here now you cherubim you share from angels and man comprehend his infinite wisdom if you can here when wisdom speaks from out of the highest plane is beauty and simplicity so keep it simple and plain man like every other thought of the law was but a seed that held deep within the potencies of god indeed he must be planted deeply in the soil to grow unfold as does the flower bud unfold the Show. He was ordained to be the Lord of the plain of soul. There's a multitude of lessons that man must learn. So we work through the ages till the test confirmed. 
And then, man was clothed in flesh, so a carnal nature was full manifest. He had to pass through all of the ways of life without a foe. A soldier never knows his strength, right? Saga continues. Saga continues. Saga continues. Look for me in the whirlwind. Man can't die, no lie. The spirit man is one with the law. While God lives, man can't die. Let every living thing stand still and hear Who's the Lord of the plain that manifests down here? Man will regain his lost estate on your squares Claim your heritage, more find your nerves You do it in the conflict that can't be told in words You must suffer trials and temptations manifold But a great prophet came here to let you know The cherubim and the seraphim that rule the stations of the stars And the spirit of the mighty God of law His protectors and his God will lead him to victory Perfected by what she suffers throughout her past history They'll stand untrammeled Facing our number foes You must overcome and overcome every one of those Yea, though they walk through the valley of a thousand nights Hope will forever be his beacon light There's no failure for the human soul You gotta just keep moving forward You can't lose no remorse Laws to cure, keep your body clean with water Your heart be pure Our laws leading on to victory sure Saga continues Saga continues Saga continues Look for me in the whirlwind Man can't die, no lie The spirit man is one with the law While God lives, man can't die Relay race to keep the Tim's lace, pass the baton on the torch the weight of the world, hoping your arms strong. 50 in the clip, back and chest, chisel stripping for law. Manifest from the flesh to the crystal. Want not the body, you can leave it like Emmanuel. Cause I refuse to stand stuck where man is fell. I see the patterns, the footprints, hunt clearly. Looking like an Egyptian, saying, My sheep, hear me. All ye Asiatics, ye angels, of your mighty race, ain't nothing you can't do. Cause David's new Goliath laced him with the slingshot Like Malcolm looking out the window Patient for the clean shot The sword trembles, get on the right side of it Swift justice, Satan's neck collide with it The cares of the world, you can't get inside with it You must need a flesh and you can see that I did it Man can't die, no lie The spirit man is one with the law While God lives, man can't die